of course, back on Big U TV, the Hurricane Kid looks to have gained about a pound and a quarter. And he looks great, Eric Garagiulo. It's been some time since we've seen the Hurricane Kid here in CZW. And this should be a very interesting match as he goes one-on-one -on -one with his former partner, your favorite wrestler, Cowboy. The super heavyweight, I like to call him, Eric. The ultra-violent Cowboy. Would you say the same about the Hurricane Kid as being a super, look at him, he's doing push-ups, he's gonna get winded. He just kicked out four push-ups, Garjulo. Show that man a little respect. Hurricane Kid and Cowboy have claimed recently they dropped their dead weight, and you know who that is. What? And they are looking for competition, and tonight it seems to be from each other. <laughs> As we await the presence of the towel boy, who's been with CZW for quite a while now. One of our ill-fated acquisitions of the year 2001. Look at the tremendous shape the Hurricane Kid is in, Eric. Tremendous shape. He had to put on at least 40, 50, 60 pounds. That was just since we last seen him. That was just armpit hair. The Hurricane Kid looks to have left his grease in the back. He hasn't oiled up his body. Or maybe Talboy stole it out of his bag. I don't know what's going on here. Seems to be a delay. As we await the presence of his opponent. Cowboy has his own little following of fans here, almost like a cult following. I think they all came in the same minivan going to a minivan. The Cowboy, very familiar with this building, hasn't had an official match in this building for quite some time. But tonight that changes. He's a super heavyweight, Eric. Super what? A super heavyweight. Seems like he left his grease and oil in the back. In tremendous physical condition. I wish I could say the same for you. Oh, please, don't do me any favors. And the towel boy now getting into the ring. I don't even know why he calls himself the towel boy anymore. He doesn't come out here and use the towel. He claims to be a licensed professional wrestler now. He is no longer a towel boy. And of course, CZW consistently provides great opportunities for youngsters within our company to grow. And again, Showing that here is a prime example in the Cowboy and Hurricane Kid. And what a way, what a way to kick things off, Gargiulo, with a collar and elbow tie-up. The very first time we saw the Hurricane Kid, he came into Delaware as an arch rival of Ruckus. Ruckus did defeat him soundly, but again, CZW officials saw potential in him. Look at that, a drop total went out of the Cowboy. Hey, Eric, when was the last time you saw a match of CZW start off with a collar and elbow? I think last month. Look at that, he goes for a bow and arrow and a kick out. And what is he flexing for? The guns, Daddy, he's flexing the guns. Your guns? I think he's shooting blanks. Hurricane Kid and Tavoy, of course, starting things off at this big event tonight. And would like to start a real fast pace tonight for the rest of the wrestlers to follow. The opening match, a very important part of the card. It sets the pace for the rest of the evening. Up and over is the Hurricane Kid. The towel boy showing a little athleticism there. Going for one hell of a weak elbow, if you ask me. A leap for what did he trip? And look at the agility there by the ultra-violent towel boy. For a super heavyweight, he's more agile than Ruckus. And for a moron, you sure sounded pretty stupid. And neither man able to gain an advantage there. Hurricane Rana rolls through, sunset flip. Not enough. And look at that big boot with the sneaker. Big converse to the midsection. Big chop there by the ultraviolet towel boy. Locking the wind right out of the Hurricane Kid. But look at this, wow! That's one hell of a chop. And it hurts these guys a little bit more. It means they have no protection on their body. How about the velocity from towel boy? That's the strength from the towel boy, Eric. He just hurled the Hurricane Kid right into the corner and almost took his head off. Cowboy and Hurricane Kid both acquired by CZW in 2001. Big super kick there. Hurricane Kid gets a little bit of a break there on the outside. Cowboy now with a big 
Converse to the head. Climbing the ropes. You gotta be kidding me, big moonsault. And there's no mats out there. There are no mats to protect the wrestlers. Tremendous move there by the towel boy. It seems a lot of those fans that were booing them earlier on appreciating the effort of one towel boy. That shows the smarts of our fans, Eric. They don't give anyone a chance. Towboy now, they gave you a chance. Towboy now, all over the Hurricane Kid. Hurricane Kid's chest about to turn pink. What a clothesline, all, fi all 50 pounds behind it. Big knee drop to the head. And if you're the Towboy, you gotta watch out for that Hurricane Kamikaze from the Hurricane Kid. You wanna talk about the chest of the Hurricane Kid? Look at the Towboys, Eric. Absolutely spotlighting. They, they may very well have broken blood vessels in their chest guard, Julo. Indeed, they may have. What an opportunity here for these two youngsters to showcase their talents in front of this monster crowd here in Viking Hall. Towboy now wincing in pain. Ryan Logan making the count. And a big miss. Nobody home. For the towel boy. Looks like he went for a tumbleweed leg drop there, Gargiulo, and he missed. That's why they're called high risk maneuvers. Indeed, they are. Hurricane Kid now looking to set up the towel boy. Oh! And the Hurricane Kid nails his own ankle in the process. He may have shattered it. He may have shattered his ankle. That may have taken just as much out of the towel boy as it did the Hurricane Kid. Hurricane Kid now limping badly. He's hurting. But a true warrior, he a table, a table's bigger Wait than him. Wait a minute. A table's bigger than him. Has the Hurricane Kid gone nuts, Eric? The Hurricane Kid now set up the table. Taking a little bit too much time outside. A table with a big shot to the back, and another. This, ma this match, excuse me, very even. Nobody's had a distinct advantage yet. Well, Eric, if you look at the tail on the tape, they're both about 360 pounds apiece. 360 pounds apiece. Oh, big clothesline there by the Hurricane Kid. Maybe all three of them combined, including Brian Logan, 365 pounds. Well, no, if you want to throw Brian Logan, they get to add another 285 pounds. Another 300 pounds. Easy. Hurricane Kid now up top, giving the fans a one-finger salute. High cross body, and a miss. These fans here not too impressed at the efforts of these two. Big reverse knife edge chop, and another reversal. Tabloid up, sunset flip. We saw a similar move earlier. Has him in a victory roll position. Not enough. Tremendous agility there by the towel boy. Hurricane Kid now positioning up. For that Hurricane Kamikaze. Oh. Hurricane Kamikaze. And what is he pulling? What? That's the guns. That muscle's going to fall off. Look at him wasting all of that valuable time in there. Trying to pose for the camera. That may come back to haunt the Hurricane Kid, Eric. Undoubtedly still affected by his past. Posing for our CZW website photographer. Outside of the ring. And the Hurricane Kid not smart enough to follow up with the opportunity that he had after he hit that Hurricane Kamikaze. His version of the Kamikaze. What's he doing, Eric? He could have won this match. And again, the Hurricane Kid flexes. And oh, wait a minute. Oh, whoa. Wait a minute. The clouds have oh, oh. back. Nate Hatred oh, has oh. returned to Viking Hall. Uh oh. What does the Hurricane Kid think he's doing? Ah. Hatred hangs on. Oh. Bam, Eric. Everybody out of the pool. Everybody out of the pool. He's back. Man overboard. Bam! Decapitator! Decapitated clothesline! He's back, Eric, and he's pissed off! He's back with a vengeance! He has one position now! Big powerbomb! Big powerbomb! I need hatred! 
and it is incensed. He is incensed. Everybody knows what happens to his partner, Nick Gage, last month when Nate Hatred was in Japan. This isn't good, Eric. This isn't good for the champ. And Nate Hatred has returned here to CZW with a vengeance the first time in this building since January the 12th. Eric, the champ is in big trouble, Eric. Nate Hatcher right now absolutely incensed. I think he said to cut the music. Yeah, do it! And Nate Hatred is upset. The Backseat Boys, they're your boys! What do they do, Eric? What do they do? Well, that's true. I don't think I've ever heard hatred speak this much. Sure did. He's about three feet to our left. What's the matter? You got a little problem what we did last month? Yeah, I got a problem with you, Justice. I want to rip this hole in your asshole. What is he, what is he thinking? What a sicko. Well, I tell you what, me hatred. If you were here last month, that shit would have happened to you. Don't think just because you were in Japan, you're safe because you can get your ass kicked right now. Looks like we got our, our we, we got He's coming up here. Challenge. He's coming up here. I hope they don't wrestle by us. This is going to be a win. Wait a minute. Here comes Steve Rags. Steve Rags not too far behind. They all over Nate Hatred. Double team and Nate Hatred. And Nate Hatred, a one man wrecking machine. He's an animal. He's a machine. All over Steve Rags. Justice Payne now climbing up top. Looks like he may have deserted his partner. Do you blame him, Gargiulo? Either that is he's positioning Nate Hatred. They're about three feet away from this broadcast table, too. I don't blame him, Eric. Now one. I don't blame him, Eric. 
Makes me sick. Steve Rhymes and Justice Payne still surveying the action here. Look at him just laughing at him. Just laughing at Nate Hatred. Well, he thinks it's funny, Eric. There's nothing funny about this. You think it's funny? I'm not saying nothing. I plead the fit. Justice Payne mimicking Nate Hatred. Steve Rhymes, wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! That's... That's the new weapon show! Jerry Lynn! Jerry Lynn has just made his way into the CZW arena! What's he doing here? Jerry Lynn will come back! Eric, what's he doing here? Jerry Lynn is back in Viking Hall for the first time since December the 23rd of 2000. Well, 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 what are we here? I guess he's been watching the show. Jerry, welcome back. Eric, I don't think Jerry Lynn knows what he's getting himself into. Look at him, he looks in phenomenal shape. He's jacked. Tell me what you're thinking. How am I going to win the title that you lose your fucking mind and think you're a god? Give to the rest of your business, huh? You're damn right. Veterans like Jerry Lynn don't take too kind to Justice He can't Kane. talk to our champ like that. He just did. I think Justice Payne has just been challenged. And he's back! And he's back! He just can't come in here and make challenges, Eric! He just did! It was short, it was sweet, and it was to the point! What a way to return to this building! Yeah, shut up! Show me what's up. 
Wait a, Wait a minute, it looks like we got an impromptu match between Steve Rives and Jerry Lynn. Yeah, you, you just can't come in here and make challenges to the champ. He just did. He just did. He's one of the men that helped pioneer this building, and this building helped pioneer him. And Jerry Lynn in there with a big right, and a big right, and another by the new Redfin show. What did he think he was going to walk in here? We were just going to give him a title match? Yes, he did. And a big pull line takes him off his feet. The new Redfin show with Steve Rhymes. We've seen him do this before. Cradle Pearl. Cradle Pearl driver. Eric, wait a minute. And he is feeling it. He's, He's going to feel it to the champ, Eric. Talk about a return. He's a former World Heavyweight Champion himself, John House. I think we're going to have ourselves a match leader on tonight. Oh, you think? If the champ says we're going to have a match, we'll have a match. If the champ don't want to have a match, he won't have a match. Steve Rise has no clue what hit him. And the plan, the plan, excuse me, of Justice Payne has just blown up in his face. Justice Payne, as most recently, has found himself the hunted, hunted by the Messiah, and now hunted by the new epic show, Jerry Lynn. Japanese superstar? Well, Eric, he did just get back from Japan, right? Yes. Well, that makes him a Japanese superstar. How many matches did he win over there? He won all his matches. Do you, realize, do you realize that it has been well over a year since Seabar has won a singles match at CZW? He may be on the biggest losing streak of anybody here in this company. Do you have any idea what you're talking about, Eric? Absolutely. Steve Barr has come a long way since joining this all court connection. Have you ever seen a more ugly man? Have you ever seen anybody more unattractive in your life? Never. I have to agree with you, Gargiulo, with that. He did win CZW's most hated wrestler in a fan poll that ended the year 2001. Oh, make me want to vomit. Make me want to vomit. He's about as attractive as a dead moose on the side of the road. The bar cam, what did we dig him up from? I haven't seen him in quite a few months. Interestingly enough, the bar cam and Z-Bar were once associated with each other. Program sellers, to be correct. Yes. Markham looks to have dropped a lot of weight. Tremendous physical shape. Eric, like, you want to talk about somebody who has totally revamped himself? It is the Markham. He must have dropped at least 60 pounds. He's been in the gym, and he looks ready to continue z Bar's losing streak. He looks in tremendous shape, unlike his former associate on the other side of the ring. Chris Styles making his way to the ring. Chris Styles, of course, very rarely sees singles competition here at CZW. We're a tag team wrestler with his regular partner, Ian Knox. And look at Chris Styles. He looks in tremendous shape. What an athlete. Look at the physique of Chris Styles. And the last time we saw Chris Styles, it was in a tag team match with Ian Knox, Eric. Absolutely, they came out the losing side against the Midnight Outlaws. And z -Bar looks bored, sitting on the turnbuckle. You know something, Eric? How come you, how come you can never bring up the bright side to a situation? What's the bright side to this situation? Well, they came up to the losing end. Well, what does that have to do with it? Well, that's the fact. Of course, this three-way dance is elimination style. So it does not end until all wrestlers are eliminated. So there's no tags. No tags. We'll see two pinfalls before it's all done. A handshake. 
He's got that kind of smile. You just want to, you just, you just want to punch him in the face. Double boot to the midsection. Z-Bar and Chris Styles forming quite a union here. Z-Bar, along with his partner Nick Burke, have wrestled Ian Knox and, and Chris Styles in tag team matches. The softcore connection successful in those matches. That was a smart move to double team the bar cam, Eric. They have to stay on top of him, get rid of him, and Chris Styles and Z-Bar can duke it out for themselves. Z-Bar, again, just returned from a tour of Big Japan Pro Wrestling. Seems that maybe he's clapping for himself, clapping for a suplex. Why don't you do something to impress us? And then we'll clap. Big boot to the head there by Z Bar. Chris Styles with another boot to the head. Chris Styles taking a little bit of a cheap shot there. Look at the face. Look at the mug. Look at the arrogance on Z Bar's face. Double shoot him in. The bar came with a big clothesline. Takes the big Z Bar right off his feet. Spins around. And oh! And Z-Bar slapping, Bar came in the back. Big punch, and another big right hand. Z-Bar, Bar Cam reverses. Oh! Brings him right down with that jawbreaker. That was a tremendous move there by the Bar Cam, Eric. Big super kick. Chris Styles quick. And that's it for the Bar Cam. Bar Cam never even seen it coming, Eric. Looks like we'll be seeing him in what, June, July next? Now it's down to two. Chris Styles and Z-Bar, and that's enough for you. This could be a very good matchup right here. Both men young, big power slam. Both men young, hungry to prove themselves here at CZW. And what a tremendous victory it would be if Chris Styles could pull off a win over Z-Bar, Eric. Big clothesline, ducks underneath, and another big right, and a big standing drop kick. Got a lot of height there for the big man. Scoop and a slam. You know what's coming. It's time for the donkey punch, John. Your favorite move, Eric. What the hell? Bam! Donkey punch. Donkey punch. And look at him with that pin. Did that face pin. How humiliating. Could you imagine getting pinned by somebody like that? Very frustrated. Goes for a choke. One thing about Z-Bar, he stays right on top of his opponent, Eric. He likes to stay on top of a lot of things. Physically, oh, you noticed that too. I have. Z-Bar now on the receiving end of a big right hand, telling the fans to shit up. Three big right hands there by Chris Styles. Z-Bar at the reversal. I'm surprised no Nick Burke out here. Look at him riding him like a bull. Riding him like a bull. And a kick out. Ew, ew, ew. Just like a fish out of water, put the shirt down. My God, the humanity. And a big block, and another. Sinks into a backslide, two and no. Chris Styles now needs to seize the opportunity. Z-Bar, looked like he was maybe gonna go for that Barracuda. Two clotheslines. Nick Burke conspicuous by his absence. I haven't seen Ty Street around in a while. This soft core connection does not seem to be too unified lately. What has happened to the soft core connection, Eric? At one time, they were the strongest faction here at CZW. Not anymore. Nick Burke, former Iron Man champion, they were in the hunt for tag team gold, and they won. Z Bar, of course, a former associate of the big deals with Zandig and Trent Acid at that time. Big right, big right. Big right shoots in Z-Bar. Big backdrop. And a big clothesline. T-Bone suplex, Styles flex, excuse me. Right. Not enough. Two count there by Brian Logan. Chris Styles now climbing up top. Looks like he's going upstairs. Like, what's he setting him up for? Maybe a missile drop kick off the top. And a big super kick using the same move. Then ended the match for Barkham. Fluff! Fluff! Chris Styles just got fluffed. And he hammered him with the fluff, Eric. And that should be it. And it is. And the streak is ended. The streak is ended. C-Bar now. 2-0.
two and 99. The fluff ends it all for Chris Stiles. Good effort by Chris Stiles, but not enough. Against Z Bar. to be John in recent weeks here on Fake You TV. You're absolutely right, Gorgiulo. And no decisive winner in any of their matches, Eric. GQ the first by count out. Chris Cash, of course, nailed. GQ at the cash flow off the stage here, beat him by count out. But tonight, no count out. And Eric, I have no idea how GQ is even showing up for this match after the cash flow off of the property here at the new CZW Arena. Chris Cash now giving the fans a two-finger salute. Once again. And again, ripping that sign apart. Chris Cash, just a man psyched. Just totally psyched right now for his contest with former partner GQ. Chris Cash has so much adrenaline, so much personality, so much intensity, Gorgulo. There's no stopping Chris Cash. Obviously, Chris Cash forgot to take his whittling before showing up to the building. And from time to time, he does his own play-by-play. Of course, the money man of this former tag team, GQ. And Eric, what a tremendous tag team they would have been if they would have just put their differences aside and stayed together. Look at that, Chris Cash is ready. A lot of professional jealousy. GQ comes from a family who's loaded. They have plenty of money. Chris Cash from the trailer park. Bro, the trailer park? Eat it off of food stamps, Gorgiulo. Food stamps? Are you saying he's on welfare? Are you saying he's on public assistance? You said it! Rob Hartog doing his job, checking out GQ. You know, it's about time. I know you're a big Rob Hartog fan. GQ does not seem to be as focused as his rival Chris Cash. That's the contrast to Styles, Eric. Chris Cash full of energy. GQ more laid back. Wait a minute. What's Lobo's music doing on? It's Lobo's music. That's the boss. That's the boss, Eric. Wait a minute, I know who that man is that was behind him. That was Big Daddy Smooth. Oh, Big Daddy Smooth. Wait a minute, look at Lobo. He looks like a poor kid on picture day in the seventh grade. Eric, that is our new boss, Eric. Look at him, dressed to the nines. That suit's gotta be back by midnight. If you notice, this Lobo's taking over our increase in pay. Our paychecks have gone up. Mine has gone down. What are you talking about? Mine's going up, Eric. That's because I've been loyal to the boys. Last time I saw him, he went through about four flaming tables. Where did he get money to buy a suit like that? He's the boss of this company, Eric. He's got... Zandig is the boss of this company. He's got the CZW credit card. Zandig is the boss of this company. Oh, wait a minute. I got the credit card. I forgot to give it back to him. Obviously, Lobo forgot the shave. Yeah. 
tough enough. Tough enough. Point to all this. Can we get the show on the road? He's the boss, Eric. He can do what he wants, when he wants, and how he wants. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he put it on the map. in his face. Oh, wait, leave the kid alone. No, no, you shut up. Leave the kid alone. The young kid. I won't be on top of that. I won't be on top of that. People get into his head, say stupid things. A lot of people got into his head, GQ's head, said a lot of stupid things. Quiet storm. I love that little guy. One of the most versatile athletes I've ever seen. Yes, he's fired, Eric. You're going to be kidding me. What will they ever do to him? You'll never see Quiet Storm, Eric. But this was a big, friendly company. He's got no pull around here. You don't win. He's got no pull around here to fire anybody. Just take your ass. Oh, and wait, wait a minute. Here comes wait the true order. Here comes the real order of season. Wait, wait, we're getting ready to have a party, Eric. John Zanzig always comes out and crashes it. What's his problem? Looks like he brought a friend with him. Some barbed wire. Listen to the words. Since he was born, they couldn't hold him down. The owner of CZW, the man that put this company on the map. The blood, sweat, and tears of him and all those young boys in the back. It wasn't just one, it was all of us. Who the hell does Lobo think he is coming out here and firing people? He's got no pull around here. Because he's the boss, Eric. He beat John Zanzig. Why don't you go in there and fire somebody? Oh, I, you want me to do it? Yeah. Hey, Eric, how come Big Daddy Smooth has the name on the back of his shirt? And look at him going nose to nose. Yeah, why does he have that name there? In case he forgets what his name is. Shelby takes his shirt off. He knows which one is his. Last time we saw these two, they were going through the pyramid of hell. And they all want to see them go at it again. You know, I used to have a little bit of respect for John Zanathan. That HC Low came out here and made the three count. <laughs> Hardest working bunch of guys I have ever been around. You're welcome, Zandig. Beat it. I would sense low. You lost, Zandig. John Zandig, now get out of here. Stop crying.
This could get ugly real quick. Oh, it can. You saw. I would love to see it again. I don't think you want it, John Santa. Oh, he wants it. They should be all proud, all real proud of this guy. Did he just say something nice about Zandy? I think. Wait a minute, what? Is he going to say what I think he's going to say? What? What? I told you! What? I told you, Grand Julio! You're going to be kidding me! Excuse me! Get the step in, John Zayden! Did he just... Is Lobo... My God, the ratings are gonna drop! My God! Oh! And they go off their feet! Sucker punch by John Zayden! It's his company! He rips his head off. I don't like clothesline to the spinning clothesline from hell. And he's all over the rock and rebel. He's not a point here. He doesn't give a damn. What are you gonna do? Suspend him? No, I see him, Eric! He, he is so here. He throws level out of the ring. Get the fuck out of 
He's gonna kill somebody. Clothes, Eric. Oh, when he lost this say? company, he lost everything. You shut up. What a maniac. What a maniac. Rebel may have lost the tooth. This is great, two. Eric. This is the best thing that's ever happened to CZW. Rebel may have lost a tooth or two. It'll all add up to that Confederate smile of his. And Rebel now just throwing wicked punches at anybody, wild punches. Did he just hit the doctor? We got problems with the State Athletic Commission. This scene's gonna get ugly real quick here. My God! Oh, look at Pastor. The man is 85 years old. Can we please resume action here? running a company. Look at Chris Cash up there dancing. Moron. This match has just started. GQ now all over Chris Cash. His former partner and now rival. And GQ taking total advantage of the situation while Chris Cash is back with turns. Remember, there are no count outs here. I believe disqualifications can happen. And there must be a winner, right? I don't know about that. I just know there are no count outs. I would imagine that either wrestler could be disqualified. Nice arm bar there by GQ. Although at CZW we like to see a winner here, so it is very rare that we disqualify any of the combatants. And Eric, GQ and Chris Cash have had some tremendous matchups here over the last couple of months at CZW. Now what do you think that GQ is thinking? Of course, Lobo went in there. Obviously, he has a problem with GQ, and now Lobo, the official owner of this company. Of course he does. See, Sheriff Lobo, our new boss, Eric, he's big on loyalty, okay? So that's something you have to watch out for as well as GQ. Double underhook DDT. I'm going to ignore that comment. Oh, oh yeah, you better. Well, I'm going to ignore you that comment. You better take heed to what I say to you. Are you saying my position here as a broadcaster is threatened? What I'm saying is you... You might see an even bigger decrease in your pay, Eric. Can't get much lower. GQ, I'll be owing the company money at that rate. GQ with the right hand. Did you get your credit card? No. I got mine. It's probably coming out of my account. Spinning kick there by Chris Cash. Up now with the big clothesline. Takes his former partner off his feet. Chris Cash out. has to stay right on top of GQ guard, Jolo. Big drop kick there. You have to watch out for that cash flow of Chris Cash. Has him set up now, just drives the body of GQ into the canvas. Did you see the way Lobo was in there smacking GQ around, Eric? That's what he's gonna do to you. 
trying to do it to me. I'm not stupid enough to go on some other television show. Chris Cash springboard and a leg drop and a miss. Chris Cash now, his legs are hurting him. Did you have to say he missed, Eric? Yes, I did. Did you have to say? I'm an objective announcer here, unlike some people to my right. Goes for an atomic drop. I call it the way John House sees it. You call it the way Lobo wants John House to call it, and you know it. Big Russian leg sweep there by GQ, hanging on. Bam! Drives the face right into the canvas, may break his nose with a move like that. Look at him, not even going for a, a hook there, not even hooking the leg. Does he even care? And Eric, GQ doesn't seem to be himself after what Sheriff Lobo, the boss, did to him prior to this match. The last two matches these two wrestlers have had, they started it out very technical, wrestling each other. This one, unlike the previous two, and it's been more of a fight, more of a brawl. GQ now looking for something underneath the ring. A chair, maybe. Now I mean, has, Eric, there hasn't been a clear-cut winner in this view between GQ and Chris Cash, so one of them has to take it to the next level and take chances. So GQ with a big reverse knife edge chop and another. And once again, singly for two. I don't know what kind of a sign he's trying to make there. Chops by Chris Cash. These two very unforgiving amongst each other. Slams his head into the canvas. Rolls him into the ring. GQ now picking up Chris Cash, maybe a snap suplex here. Chris Cash lands on his feet. Dragon suplex, dragon suplex. And not enough. Chris Cash holding his face, maybe still smarting from an earlier maneuver. Picks up GQ, goes for a suplex. Oh! That's gotta hurt. You ever been suplexed before, Eric? Never. Oh, this is gonna happen. Have you? This is gonna happen to you. you. I cannot believe that with all is said and done that Lobo is now the official owner of this company. Oh! He thinks he's ruckus in there. There's only one of ruckus in the back. He went for the 450 and he missed, Eric. That might come back to haunt Chris Cash. And now GQ going upstairs. Can you imagine what this place is going to be like when we return here May 11th to the very first All Lobo show? This is with the Frog Ton. On May 11th, we return here to Viking Hall, but it will be the very first show totally under the control of Lobo. It's going to be a great day, Eric. It's going to be a party in South Philadelphia. Things are going to be a little bit different around here, that's for sure. I'm gonna pull up with my brand new Mercedes. Mercedes? All I gotta do is put it on the credit card. Whose credit card is that? The company credit card? What the hell does Lobo know about running a business? Does he look like a man you wanna see going into a television station and negotiating a deal for us? He knows about taking care of the people that's been loyal to him, Eric. We're gonna lose our investors. You just mad because you didn't get a credit card. I don't even think I get a credit card. I don't even think I have a paycheck anymore. Chris Cash now looking for something underneath the table. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. April the 13th is when we return here. And you wonder why your paycheck's going down, Eric. You can't remember nothing. I'm just in shock. I am just in a state of shock here. As to CZW's future at the hands of Lobo, I'm just in a state of shock. GQ tied up in those ropes. Remember, no count outs. No count outs, Nardulo. No count outs. The face of CZW can change forever. These two have had quite a rivalry here over the last few weeks. Started at the cage at Death 3. Hurricane Rana, GQ holds on, what strength, oh, right on a bam, neck. turns that into a DDT. Eric, you know, Chris Cash said he was going to try to break the neck of GQ, well, it looks to me as if GQ just tried to break the neck of Chris Cash. It may not always be pretty, but it sure was effective. Covered there by GQ, not enough. 
two and a half. And just think, Eric, if Rob Hartog was in the physical shape he should be in, that, this match would have been over. What are you trying to say about his Rob Hartog may, even, may not even be here on April the 13th. What he should do is take that time he's at McDonald's on 35 cent hamburger Tuesdays and go to the gym. You know a lot about Get the, on the treadmill. You know a lot about the, the price of the food at McDonald's, don't you? I had to feed him one time, Eric. That must have cost you an arm and a leg. I hope you put that on the credit card. Chris Cash now up behind. GQ looks like he's going to set him up here for a German suplex. You're going to be kidding me, but Chris Cash caught up in a tree of woe. CZ fucking W! Chris Cash now gets himself out of that tree. Big moonsault, and he overshot GQ by a mile. I think he needs his vision checked. Springs into the ring. The very effective move, but not so much for the effective cover. Or unaffected cover, I should say. Where's Chris Cash going? Maybe he's going home. Maybe he's going back to the trailer park. Maybe he's leaving. Maybe he's had enough of these fans, Eric. You know what? If what? Sheriff Lemon to give me the credit card, I'd have enough of these fans. Maybe he's going to head back up this way. He's bringing out a ladder. These two youngsters will stop at nothing. That's a 15-foot ladder, Eric. Right into the back of GQ. Positioning him on top of the table. All right. Eric, how long have these two been wrestling? What, about six, seven months apiece? And where do they go to school? The CZW Wrestling Academy. What do you think Lobo's going to have them taught there? Wait a minute. They've only been wrestling six months, and they're already on fake UTV. And listen to this crowd. Chris Cash has to be out of his mind to do something like this to his former partner. Shades of Adam Flash, he's going to cripple his partner. Wait a minute, he's coming down. He's coming down. What? This was all just a big ruse. Aha! Is this what the rest of this company is going to be like under the leadership of Lobo? <laughs> yes, leave him alone. He's a father of seven. That's his problem. The father. What do Rob Hartog have to do with this? And it looks like Chris Cash and GQ have reunited. Nick Burke making his way down to the ring here. I don't see an opponent for him or our sheep. Are you going to do it, Eric? Or do you want me to do it? Be my guest. Former world champion, former Ironman soft court champion, and pound for pound, the most underrated wrestler here at CCW. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Nick Burke now making his way to the ring. Again, no opponent that I see on my sheet here. He was scheduled to wrestle Quiet Storm, although Quiet Storm has been fired by Lobo. Yeah, he's fired, Eric. And the fans here are not too impressed by the former World Heavyweight Champion. I have an opponent for Nick Burke on my sheet. Oh, yeah? How come you ain't got one on yours, Eric? Because you don't cooperate with the boss. That's why. What would you like to tell me who his opponent is? I ain't telling you. You'll find out when it happens. You're a real pal, you know that? Some partner. And I don't think Nick Burke's gonna like it very much.
That's right, he was fired earlier tonight by Lobo. The boss, Eric Stark, oh, the boss! They don't care. Oh, it's storytelling time again, John. What a beautiful moment. Remember that? They had the run on his head. That was a tie street. That was an imitator. seen Ty Street in quite some time. And Nick Burke enjoying the music. And the heat has returned. That's him, Eric. That is Ty Street for sure. Absolutely. Not that pony tie street, you know, the one that's about 75 pounds heavier and a little bit more clumsy. The other tie street looks like he had an asthma attack or something. Face swelled up. Now this tie street looks like he has returned here in tremendous shape. He looks like he had poison ivy on the face. <laughs> We haven't seen this Thai Street in some time. And he looks great, Eric. You like how he timed that perfectly, getting into the ring at the same time the music went off? What is he talking about? Remember the fake Thai Street interfered in the Divine Storm matchup against the Soft Core Connection? You call that a good bleach job? Because you're an idiot. What is this, a night at the Apollo? So in that case, why are you showing me my high street wrestles? Looks well, like we have a little bit of a challenge here amongst soft core connection members. What is he wearing, biking gloves? Well, it's on, Eric, the real Ty Street versus Nick Burke. Nick Burke shot in, Ty Street down, Ty Street up. Spins him around, goes right to work on the arm. Nick Burke, of course, a former World Heavyweight Champion, ended the reign of Justice Payne February of last year. That the very last loss, the very last time that Justice Payne has been pinned. And Eric, he never got to put the belt on. No, he didn't. Immediately set up by the big deals and the rest is history. And of course, Nick Burke lost the Iron Man Championship match in his very first title defense. Nick Burke lands on his feet. Big headlock. Now, how do you think Lobo feels about the soft core connection? They aren't exactly two people that see eye to eye. Lobo, of course, enjoys the violence, the soft core connection preaching anti violence. Bam! Big backdrop there by Ty Street. How do you think that Lobo and the soft core connection are going to get along? Eric, I'll tell you right now, if you are not loyal to the boss, I don't care who you are, you're finished. Do you realize that Nick Burke still does not realize that this is the real Ty Street in there? I know it, you know it, everybody knows it, except Nick Burke who's looking eye to eye with him. I don't think Nick Burke realizes much of anything, Gargiulo. Ty Street very athletic there. Spinning heel kick to the back. Ty Street, what is with those stupid gloves? Starts punching the kidneys of Nick Burke. I'll knock that stone right out. Gonna tie him up into some kind of a surfboard position. Again, punches the kidneys. Nick Burke fighting as, as much as he can out of that. 
And right now, he is going to stretch Nick Burke. Look at that, putting the pressure right on the back of the knees, and on top of the neck. Hitting predicament here. Both wrestlers had their shoulders down. High Street now up. The fans not amused by this contest of former or current partners. I don't know if they're still even aligned. I don't even know if there is a soft core connection. Z Bar is out here. Too soft core for these fans, Gargulo. High Street now the big the midsection and a big right hand. Ducks under. Goes for a full Nelson. And he's going to go for a dragon suplex. Thinks he's Ken Patera in there. Hopefully he'll leave Mr. Saito at home. Drops it right on the back of his neck. Tremendous move there by Ty Street. Yeah, take a bow. Have another. A very humble Ty Street. I mean, Eric, if Ty Street wins this match, would that make him the leader of the soft core connection? If he wins this match, will Nick Burke realize that this is the real Ty Street and not that imitator? And what does this leave Z-Bar? Does anybody really care? Ty Street now climbing back into the ring. Spits out at the fans. Nick Burke with a punch in the midsection. And another. Followed it up. Big eye reek. Side slam to the wall. It's for your mom, John. Two count there. What, is he going to kiss Hartog? What's Hartog trying to do? Ty Street's not his dinner. Hartog's shirt just came untucked. No, oh, please. We don't need to see that. Ty Street now picking up Z Bar. Or excuse think, me, Nick Burke. I don't think the lens on the camera is big enough. What I was going to say is I'm pretty surprised that Z Bar has not made his presence known during this matchup. Ty Street now. Looked like he was going to go for a Cape Rock, but instead turned around with a leg drop. And missed. Big clothesline there by Nick Burke. The big Texas clothesline. Maybe going to set him up for a Burke driver. No, instead a body slam. Likes to flip around that leg drop. Nails it. The fans appreciate the effort. The fans really not behind either wrestler here. The fans not amused at the shenanigans of this soft core connection matchup. Some of the fans chanting for the Burka set. This is a typical soft core match, Eric. A slow paced match. Nick Burke now stretching. Ty Street, now the former Ty Street, the fake Ty Street, probably would have blown up from a move like this. The real Ty Street, Eric. The real Ty Street's in there right now. This is just the kind of match Rob Hart talk rights. A nice slow match, so he don't get blown up. That's not funny. Nick Burke now and Ty Street. Ty Street setting him up. Goes for an octopus. Nailed the octopus on Nick Burke right in the center of the ring. Ty Street has evidently expanded his repertoire of moves since we have last seen him. Nick Burke hurts his back, it seems anyway. Double clothesline. Hartog now administering the count. Ty Street now really needs to get up and do something here. A big win here for Ty Street. Could really do things for his career. Nick Burke was trying to get back on some kind of a win streak here until recently when he met the invincible Quiet Storm. They went to a time limit draw last month. Quiet Storm now fired by Lobo. And then Ty Street interjected himself into the match, Eric. Why did he do that? A tombstone, hooks the arms, oh. sits out. Again, another new move in the repertoire of Ty Street. Or as some announcers from the 80s like to say, what a maneuver. Ty, Ty Street going upstairs. Oh, look, he's having problems. Oh, Nick Burke shook Thanks the ropes. Nick Burke. Nick Burke shook the ropes. Ty Street losing his balance. 
Nick Burke now has him up. Set up for that Burke driver. Burke driver! That should be it, Eric. And nobody has kicked out of that Burke driver in quite some time. And Nick Burke can't believe it. Did you see his face? He just, he's, he's nuts. <laughs> This carnival of fools has ended. The high five miss. And wait a minute, the scoreboy! And Nick Burke outwits his partner. Outsmarts him, Eric. Here comes Z Bar bouncing out here like a schoolgirl in heat. And the soft core connection are back. I think Nick Burke just showed us why he's the leader of the soft core connection. You think they're going to charge Ty 320 bucks for that shirt? Look at these guys reunited once again. What a big party they're going to have. How'd you like to be blindfolded at that after party? did not show up, intimidated by the CZW style, but Joey Corbin and Samir have finally returned. They have lobbied for another opportunity here to showcase their skills, and they have gotten it. Joey Corbin and Samir have held numerous singles titles and tag team championships amongst each other all over the United States. Two of the hottest free agents in professional wrestling right now on the independent circuit have returned here to the combat zone. The Midnight Outlaws back, the last time we saw them, they were victorious. Over Ian Knox and Chris Stiles, they have developed a more aggressive attitude as of late from Oklahoma, Kino, and Kenny Murdoch. And you know, Eric, the other boys get that yours truly for them being back here at CZW because I was there in the CZW office when they called Sheriff Lobo and begged him you know you to come back to, to CZW. It. You know you had nothing to do with it. It was all me, Gargiulo. You're out of your mind. I told him 50 bucks a piece. 50 bucks a piece, huh? They come cheap. The logo now, the owner of this company, one would have to wonder if the over boys will be back. I guess well, a lot will depend on the effort that they show here. They said to me, but John House, that's our gas money home. All right, enough. Leave him alone. Joey Corbin and Samir, again, very victorious as they wrestle all over the United States, but here in CDW, it's a different story. They relish the opportunity to compete here on a global level. Which one is that? That is Joey Corbin in no, there. I mean the other one. Kenny Murdoch. Kenny Murdoch now in the receiving end of a front face lock. Joey Corbin and Samir blend a southern style attack along with the aerial maneuvers when they need it. Corbin and Samir both look the same, and they don't have masks on. All right. A real comedian out here. It's like a night at the improv. What is this, amateur night? Big arm drag there by Kenny Murdoch. Who's nose to nose? Oh, oh, yeah. oh. Joey Corbin. 
Kenny Murdoch got the attitude. Joey Corbin is very arrogant, as is Samir. You'd think they'd be a little bit more humble. Coming back, a tag into the later Samir. Both teams tag into the freshman guard, Julo. So I believe that's King Omar now. Yes, it is. Samir has a couple screws loose himself. It's a little crazy. And that's Samir? Yes. Is he Russian? It's Russian? German? German. Is he Puerto Rican? Italian? Kino Murdoch now. And Samir. Samir a little bit too concerned with the fans' reaction. This is the same thing that happened. Remember back in the cage of death? Samir went absolutely nuts when the fans were booing him. Samir pushing him like he's gonna have an effect against a man 50 pounds heavier than himself. Well, that's the problem with these fans at CZW, right? They don't respect nobody. You're looking at a contest right now that can get very athletic in a hurry. This match blends a nice ground attack and an aerial attack as well. Both teams very diverse. Look at him patting him on the head for good luck. Showing him up is Keno Murda. A new cocky attitude. Big elbows there by Samir gets out of that headlock. Big shoulder block there by Keno Murda. Samir now trips him up. Gets over with a front. And immediately gra grounds him, Gargiulo, by taking Keno Murda down in the mat. Takes away the size advantage. Absolutely. Samir now in the reverse. Now look at that kick. Look at the agility, the flexibility in his legs. Takes him down into a Fujiwara armbar. The Yuji Katami. Again, back to a front face lock. Has him now. Looks like he's going to shoot him into the world. Says he does. Clothesline and a duck under. Shoots him! You got to be kidding me. Look at the strength of Kino Murdoch, Eric. I hope he excused himself before he kissed the sky. Did you see the elevation? Short in. Kino Murdoch with a vicious, unforgiving forearm. And to the lower back, and what an uppercut. An uppercut Joe Frazier would be proud of. You know, he happened to be the favorite television program of Joe Frazier. The Midnight Outlaws are the favorite wrestlers of Joe Frazier. Oh, yeah? Absolutely. At least that's what I've been told. Over the head. Look at that one foot to the face. A more aggressive attitude tonight. Looks like Keno Murdoch may have put on a couple pounds. Kenny Murdoch now in there. Joey Corman face first to the top. Big reversal there by Joey Corman. I think Keno Murdoch hits the bottle, Eric. Hits the bottle. And Joey Corman went up the eighth and went on that floor. Oh, and then we're gonna do this to Samir. You gotta be kidding me. Dives off the top, right on top of his partner. Excuse me, Joey Corman. Excuse me, Samir. Kenny Murdoch now bounces himself. A senton off the top. What athleticism there. Will Samir back into the ring. Samir and Joey Corman can obviously take a lot of punishment. They have shown that here tonight. Bam! The binary driver. I've seen that somewhere before. Joey Corman now with a big super kick. But the mask may come off with that kick. Right to the chin. Joey Corman now with a big uppercut. Joey Corbin outsized. Kenny Murdoch drops him down with the Oklahoma rib breaker and follows it up with a kick right to those injured ribs. Joey Corbin and Samir really need to slow this down and regain control of this matchup. What a tremendous victory will be the other Bruce could pull one off over the Midnight Outlaws of CCW, Harris. And these Murdochs. Very fluid as a tag team. Misses the cannibal senton. Joey Corbin's been around quite a few years. He didn't just fall off the tree. Joey Corbin now with a big right. 
Shoots in Keno Murdoch. Goes right into Samir. Follows up with a big right hand. Surprise Corbin and Samir haven't broke out in a dance yet. Yeah. Like Beautiful move there by Samir. Look at right out of Kenny Murdoch. Corbin makes the tag into Samir. Shoots in Keno Murdoch. Hey Eric, how come you think the Murdochs wear masks? Because they're ugly? Know. Maybe they want to hide their identity. Maybe they have something to hide. Maybe they're wanted men. Maybe they're child molesters. Maybe the convicts. And of course, Corbin and Samir nailed a $5 buster on him. He hit him so hard, it looks like he owes him $5. You ever been hit by a $5 buster? You've probably been hit by a $100 buster just by your ex-wife. All the money you owe. And I'm still paying for that. Samir now shoots Keno Murdoch in. Big arm drag, that's how they do it down south. A lot of chain wrestling you'll see out of these overboys. They are very fluent, technically speaking. Quick tag into Joey Corman. Joey Corman and Samir have great ring presence, very aggressive. They have been in this matchup. And Samir is a lunatic. And they seize the opportunity to double team Kenny Murdoch. Big leg Larry and takes a page right out of the book of the Midnight Outlaws. Yeah, we saw you, Corman. We know it's you. Joey Corman now picking up Keno Murdoch. Hangman's neck breaker. That was a beautiful neck breaker right there. See how he tags right out to the freshman. Great tag team wrestling by the overboys. Samir now all over Keno Murdoch. He said that's it. It's got to be it if he said it. Big suplex, looks like he may have dropped a little bit of him on his head. Well, there ain't nothing wrong with that, Eric. It is one of them, Eric. You gotta do whatever you gotta do to win the match. Joey Corbin and Samir, I didn't see a tag in there. Of course, Brian Logan, easily fooled. Big elbow, rolls over, and he slaps Kenny Murdoch in. Look at the crafty moves of these over boys, very crafty in there. Stretching him, Samir with a version of the Dragon Sleeper. No, it looks like he's just wrenching back in that arm. Look for a minute, from my vantage point, it was a Dragon Sleeper, but I stand corrected. Apology accepted, guard duo. I wasn't apologizing to you, I was apologizing. You went to, you went to the boss he was at. Joey Corbin now shoots. Keno Murdoch in. K-Driller. K-Driller, no, not enough to get him over. Corbin shoots out of it. Has him up again. Oh! Drops him right across the knee. Broke that Texas spine in half. And Joey Corbin really needs to make a tag and tag quickly. And he does, Eric. He must have heard you. Big drop kick there by Keno Murdoch. Kenny Murdoch, big knee to the head. Spinning heel kick. Scoops him up. I stand corrected. They like to call that the slice and dice. Apology accepted, John. By an idiot. Joey Corbin now getting up out of instinct. Keno Murdoch hits the ropes. Kenny Murdoch looks a little confused. Samir misses a boot. Wait a minute, somebody's throat's about to be cut. But a cut throat oh, suplex. Oh, a cut throat, throat, Eric. A cut throat suplex. And then that does it for the Midnight Outlaws tonight. And they are victorious over the Overboys. And look at the confidence of Kenny Murdoch. The Midnight Outlaws are quite a streak here at CZW. It's going to be a long ride home for the Overboys. Number one, they have no gas money. Number two, he may have his neck broke. Samir goes down at the hands of the cutthroat suplex. These Murdoch brothers continue to stroll around CZW with their heads held high, rolling over the competition. A shot at the gold has to be imminent at this point. Looks like a little dissension amongst the Overboys. Maybe the next time they should hit him with a $25 buster. Five 
month absence due to a broken arm at the hands of the hate club, the former CZW World Tag Team Champion and prodigy here of Combat Zone Wrestling, Jay Briscoe. You know, Eric, you seem real excited to see the Jay Briscoe back. And what a contest this is going to be. I don't know who I can't stand the most, Ruckus or Jay Briscoe. Jay Briscoe, of course, has his arm taped up. One has to wonder how healthy his arm truly is going into this matchup. Ruckus, of course, the former CZW and Big Japan Junior Heavyweight Champion took a break from singles competition last month to team up successfully against the Rochis. Now, of course, Ruckus wants to drop down and wait and head back towards an opportunity at Trent Acid because he was robbed at the hands of the Rock and Rebel months ago. Eric, he's gonna drop at least, at least 100 pounds, Eric. 100 pounds? At least. Of course, you have the ground attack of Jay Briscoe against the high-flying aerial assault of Ruckus. What is going to give first? Is it going to be the air or is it going to be the ground? I can't stand either one of them, Eric, but this ought to be a tremendous matchup. If you're Ruckus, you want to get in there and you want to dazzle Jay Briscoe with some of those high-flying moves early on to take Jay Briscoe off his feet, make him think about things, and if you're Jay Briscoe, you need to take Ruckus off his feet. Because if Ruckus isn't on his feet and Ruckus can't go to the air, you take away a big majority of his offense. And you would have to think that the advantage would have to be on the side of Ruckus. Jay Briscoe's been out for what, five months? Yes. Ring rust, Eric. Two out of three falls. I'd be surprised if he makes it through one fall. Colorado elbow tie up into an arm drag. That is correct, John. It is two out of three falls. You not only have to pin your opponent once, but you have to pin him twice. We could be here all night. I mean, Eric, when was the last time a superstar in CZW got hurt and took off for five months? So mommy can baby. Oh, right, huh? enough already. Huh? Enough already. Jay Briscoe is now a full adult. He is of age. He doesn't need his mother. He doesn't need his father. They support him just like anybody else except your family. God knows you're a dysfunctional family. Eric, I am 30 years old, okay? My family still supports me. You got me. an uncle in jail. You got a, a mother in a rehab. And don't forget, my wife's a hooker. Of course, how do you think it met her? Gotta Jay, pay, I gotta pay the bill somehow, Gargiulo. And Jay Briscoe doing exactly what I said he needed to do. He needed to wrestle Ruckus, went right to work in the arm. Ruckus now reverses things. Jay Briscoe, the last time we saw him in singles competition, was in one hell of a matchup against Justice Payne. And, and now I got the credit card. My, he's still cradle enough. Let's have some decorum here. Get back to the match at hand. Brooke is now with a small package. Two count there by Rob Bartog. And you're not going to out finesse Ruckus, and you're not going to out finesse Jay Briscoe. What is going to get first? Talk about two guys with mutual respect amongst each other. They don't hate each other. They don't have an issue amongst each other. Who is going to be more aggressive in this matchup? Is Ruckus going to be the aggressor or is Jay Briscoe? Jay Briscoe now goes right to a headlock. Again, keeping this one a wrestling match, needs to slow it down, keep a methodical pace here, pick things apart, because these two can go all night. The conditioning goes to Jay Briscoe in this matchup, so the longer this match goes, the more it is in favor of Jay Briscoe. That's exactly what Jay Briscoe has to do, is keep Ruckus grounded. To the world, head scissor there by Jay Briscoe. Ruckus now reverses things, has a bit of a small package, hooks the legs, that could be a no. Jay Briscoe and Ruckus in the feeling out stage right now. What a battle we have here. This is the new generation here of professional wrestling. A new class in role into this very historic building, making history here every month. And I don't think this, the left shoulder of Jay Briscoe has, has healed 100%, Eric. Maybe mommy didn't baby him enough. Well, of course, most people want to see the Briscoes back together as a tag team. 
They have yet to wrestle together as a tag team since the summertime of 2001 here at CZW. But Jay Briscoe wanted to prove his critics wrong. He told Mark to stay in the back. He just wanted to go in there and wrestle Ruckus one-on-one, -on -one, no disadvantages, no psych outs, and test the arm. Handspring uses the legs. Again, Rook is doing what I mentioned earlier as well, dazzling Jay Briscoe with the moves. When's Mark Briscoe coming back, huh? When nursery school lets out the Oh, summer? right enough. Yeah. Better not let him hear that he might come up here and do something here. Big leg Lariat. Jay Briscoe, a very accomplished athlete in high school. He went both ways on the football team, playing offense and defense. He was a varsity player in both. Very decorated. High school football star has decided to bypass college to make a full-time career, a full-time go at professional wrestling here. Ruckus now, Jay Briscoe now sits back, Ruckus rolls through. Ruckus jumps up. Ruckus now picking up Jay Briscoe. Shoots Jay Briscoe in, big clothesline, and a big elbow. Jay Briscoe looks like he put the, he put on some muscle since we last saw him about five months ago or so. He didn't put no muscle on. He just looks skinny because he's standing next to the Ruckus. All right, enough of that. Big snap suplex by Jay Briscoe. Anyone looks in shape in there compared to Rob Hart, Hog, and Ruckus. Are you done? Are you finished? You don't even look in shape in there. Man. Next to Rob Hart, Hog, and Ruckus. Look at this aversion of the stretch plum by Jay Briscoe. Jay Briscoe now a month shy, excuse me, two months shy of his two year anniversary in the wrestling business. Ruckus of course debuted in the wrestling business in April of 1999. Both wrestlers began their careers at CZW on the very same show at the Delaware Invasion. Ruckus sits out with a gourd buster. Both wrestlers started their CZW careers on the very same night at the Delaware Invasion. And they've been making me sick ever since, Eric. I bet they have. In January of 2001, Jay Briscoe, of, of course, going for the Cannibal Senton. Jay Briscoe, of course, first garnished attention here at CZW during the best of the best tournament when he had what some called the match of the year against his brother, Mark Briscoe. Ruckus, of course, Garnered his first attention. Ruckus drives Jay Briscoe right into the mat with the flatliner. Ruckus now going up top, single up for the 450. No, a swan taunt dive and a miss. You see how Ruckus bounced off that mat? Short it back slide. That could be the first ball. Ruckus, of course, garnered, garnished his first attention at the boss's back and one hell of an effort against Trent Acid. Jay Briscoe now follows in Ruckus. Ruckus covers him. Jay Briscoe two feet to the head. Ruckus and Jay Briscoe have met in the past in tag team matches, splitting wins, but never in a singles match. Pulls him out of the corner, drops him right on the back. Of course, Jay Briscoe and Ruckus teamed up back in July when Mark Briscoe was injured at the hands of the hate club in that tag team tournament. Ruckus filled in, they went to the finals. Losing to BD. Great presence of mind there by Ruckus to throw his leg over that bottom rope to break up that three count by Rob Hartog. The fans getting behind Briscoe. Ruckus, a big favorite here at CZW, is usually the fan favorite in his matches. Ruckus now kicks the feet out from under Jay Briscoe. Ruckus start press, no. And a big kick to the face. Jay Briscoe obviously did a lot of scouting on Ruckus. The thing is, you can use that time off during that injury wisely if you study the videotapes, and it seems like Jay Briscoe studied a lot of Ruckus. Ruckus goes for the razzle-dazzle. Jay Briscoe again counters it. Ruckus underneath with a big super kick. Ruckus, who has most recently taken Japan by storm, went for a moonsault off the second rope. Jay Briscoe with the wheelbarrow oh. suplex. Ruckus holds on, victory roll, and a three count. Ruckus gets the first fall. Ruckus gets the first fall. He hooked the tights, Eric. He hooked the tights. One fall to Ruckus. 
one fall to Ruckus, and if you're Jay Briscoe to win this match, not only do you have to pin Ruckus, but you have to do it twice. You have to wrestle two more matches. All Ruckus has to do is pin Jay Briscoe one more time. So maybe we will see you for another five months. It's enough out of you. I would imagine that the winner of this matchup would be right in line at a title shot at Trent Acid, or maybe even Justice Payne for that matter. And Eric, what about the situation between Justice Payne and Jerry Lynn and the Hate Club? They lock up. German suplex takes him over. Kick out by Ruckus. Jay Briscoe picks up Ruckus, shoots him into the ropes. Big drop kick, takes Ruckus right off his feet. And Jay Briscoe now getting a little bit arrogant. For a guy that's down one ball, I think he's a little bit too arrogant at this point. Jay Briscoe just spit his gum out. What right happened to Jay Briscoe's attitude between falls? Looks like he's become a little bit more aggressive. What a matchup we're seeing this week on Fake You TV. Ruckus prepared. Ruckus counters. Jay Briscoe's counter. Ruckus with a big shot to the back of Jay Briscoe. As much as we love seeing Jay Briscoe in singles competition, you know his goal, besides winning championship belts, has to be to seek revenge against Nick Cage and Nate Hatred. Tremendous agility there by Ruckus. So you got to give it to him for 410 pounds. He moves like a cruiserweight. Arabian moonsault to the floor by Ruckus. And it takes Ruckus off his feet as well. The physical conditioning of, this, of these men may come into play now as this match has gone on for quite some time at a very fast pace. Well, then it would have to go into the favor of Jay Briscoe, Eric, because I don't think Ruckus is in great physical condition. Ruckus has tremendous cardiovascular conditioning for a man of his size. He's about 250 pounds overweight. Oh, come on. Ruckus now up to his feet, catches Jay Briscoe, but Jay Briscoe looks like may have caught a DDT in there. Kind of hard to see from my vantage point. Very quickly, the tide could change. It looked like we almost saw three. Jay Briscoe not showing much ring rust at all. Here in this matchup. Picks him up, screws him up, sits out with the Michinoku driver. Two. Thought it was three. And a cross arm breaker there by Jay Briscoe. Jay Briscoe getting frustrated, Eric. That can dislocate the elbow. A very, very painful move. Ruckus in a lot of pain right now. Jay Briscoe just wrenching back on that arm. Ruckus screaming in agony. Jay Briscoe looks like he may have done a little bit of shoot fighting training. Training in the art of submissions during his time off. Jay Briscoe, a very versatile wrestler. I've seen him even use light tools before. You did? Yes. You were there with me. Jay Briscoe now picks up Ruckus. Shoots him into the ropes. Ruckus now holds on. Drops Jay Briscoe right on the back of his head. Ruckus now calling for a chair. Looks like Ruckus, the aggressor now. Ruckus realizes he's got to put this one away. He wants a rematch at Trent Acid. What do you think is going through the mind of Trent Acid watching this match right now? You think Trent Acid's way about Ruckus? He already beat him. You have to worry about Ruckus. Ruckus 250 pounds overweight. Ruckus, the handspring, right into the midsection of Jay Briscoe. Excuse me, Ruckus. Ruckus and Jay Briscoe both have a lot of pride here. Personally and professionally, Jay Briscoe rolls over. It could end just that quick. Very crafty maneuver there. Jay Briscoe lands on his feet. Goes for a snap mare of his own. Ruckus now hooks him up. 
with a thrill seeker. Ruckus nails the thrill seeker. The eyes rolling in the back of the head of Jay Briscoe. It doesn't look good for Jay Briscoe, Eric. Jay Briscoe now puts the chair. Excuse me, Ruckus putting the chair in the corner. Ruckus, the obvious aggressor, he is the one that brought the chair into this matchup. Or has he dug his own grave? These two wrestlers are so quick that they could change the tide in an instant. As we just saw, his head right into the back of the chair. What a contest of athleticism here between these two athletes. These two showing why wrestling here at Combat Zone Wrestling is more of a sport than anything else. The half and half drops Ruckus on the back of his head. And I can't believe that Jay Briscoe had the strength to pull that off with Ruckus. Jay Briscoe's got a lot of strength in those legs there. Squats 500 pounds, which is phenomenal for a youngster his age. And that's about what it's like with Ruckus too, about 500 pounds. All right. Those wards with the hate club, Nick Gage and Nate Hatred, have allowed Jay Briscoe to develop a more oh, oh. A half and half on top of that chair. It was Jay Briscoe and his brother Mark who ended the long tag team title reign here at CZW of the hate club. Remember that? And of course, they were screwed by Johnny Cashmere and Justice Payne. Please, Eric. Ruckus with the reversal. Jay Briscoe now. As a Fisherman's Buster. Fisherman's Buster by Jay Briscoe. Not enough. And remember, John, should Jay Briscoe get a win here, he's got to beat him one more time, as well as Ruckus would have to beat him one more time. And how many times has Ruckus lost? Twice. Not one many. Night. Not many. I don't think ever. And I don't think Jay Briscoe has ever lost twice in one night. Big reverse knife edge chop. But I the longer this match goes, you would have to think it would go into the favor of Jay Briscoe, being in better, better cardiovascular condition. Don't let the body fool you of Ruckus. He is in tremendous shape. Superplex. Shades of the I old. think someone's got to give Ruckus a foreman grill. A foreman grill? Why don't you go in there and give it to a big shot? But you were on vacation anyway. Both wrestlers laid out. Middle of the way, listen to this crowd. A true wrestling match here tonight on Fake U TV. There are some critics out there that say CZW is nothing but ultra violence. Look at the light tubes and barbed wire. I don't see any light tubes, I don't see any barbed wire, I don't see any thumbtacks around. Just pure athleticism here tonight. CCW had a big spread recently in the publication Power Slam magazine, who covered the Cage of Death 3, a magazine sold exclusively in the United Kingdom and Australia. CCW covered all over the world. Jay Briscoe now and Ruckus both up at the same time. Right now, it seems like this match could go anybody's way. All it's going to take is one mistake by either wrestler. Ruckus follows Jay Briscoe in with an elbow. Ruckus shooting Jay Briscoe in one more time. Has a position, razzle dazzle. The razzle dazzle of Jay Briscoe. Ruckus is going to finish him off with a famous sir. Eric, why did you have to call that the razzle dazzle? I don't know, he just calls him that. What do you care? Why does that make you so angry? Ruckus not able to pin Jay Briscoe. Jay Briscoe with a lot of heart, a lot of pride. Both wrestlers have a lot of pride just competing in combat zone wrestling. Because Ruckus should be fine and suspended, Eric. For what? Because he lied to all of us. He said he was a junior heavyweight. He's a super heavyweight. He was screwed over by the Rock and Rebel in the State Athletic Commission along with Johnny Cashmere, your personal friend, and masseuse. Big clothesline and a miss. Big right hand by Ruckus. What a contest we're seeing here tonight on Big Q TV. And a couple of rights by Jay Briscoe. And Jay's going nuts. 
Slugging it out in there like two heavyweights in the 12th. They're closed fists, Eric. They're illegal. Jay Briscoe looking for the knockout punch. And I got news for you. My masseuse's name is Mrs. Gargiulo. Hey, you watch your mouth. Jay Briscoe now picking up Ruckus. And just think, every time she gets done massaging All you, right. or you get done massaging her, she comes massages me. Let's go talk about your prostitute wife again. Got to pay the bill somehow. Jay Briscoe now picks up Ruckus. And a big right, and another, and another. Again, like two boxers in the 12th, two heavyweights. Ruckus mounting Jay Briscoe. They've lost their cool. Both wrestlers right now so fatigued that they are resulting in brawling amongst each other. This is getting ugly real quick. Look at Jay Briscoe. Jay Briscoe can't even move. He may have knocked him out with one of those punches. And punch him right to the temple. Oh, the cover like that, Ruckus. Yeah, Ruckus, the cover like that, Ruckus. What are you getting frustrated for? What are you getting frustrated for? Enough. Enough. Big right hand there by Ruckus. Snap mare. Takes him over. Goes right to the sleeper hold. Leaning right on the back of Jay Briscoe, putting all of that weight right into it. Very smart. Ruckus now lays down. Taking the body weight off of Jay Briscoe. Maybe not the smartest move in the world. As we start to go 20, 21, 22 minutes into the match, I think Ruckus is starting to feel it, Eric. So he knows he has to start to wear down Jay Briscoe. Tremendous pace. You'll see them get quick and go fast and then slow down and quick and fast and slow down. Tremendous piece of this match, an absolute classic here tonight on Fake UTV. Mark this one down, because come December, when they ask you to name your match of the year, I think you might be watching one of them. Jay Briscoe, who's in position for the Jay Driller? No ruckus reverses. Jay Briscoe holds on, and a three count. He ends the match with a sunset flip. He hooked the trunks, Eric. I believe that's the first time. I believe that's the first. I believe that's the first time since 1967 a match has ended with a sunset flip. And he hooked the trunks, Eric. I seen it. And now it comes down to one more fall. After all of that, John. After that effort. After that contest. It's still not over. They still have one more fall to go. They're going to show his sportsmanship by these two athletes. Wait a minute. Here comes the. How can you? How can you be in two places at once? Look at the Midnight Outlaws. What are you talking about? And Keto Murdoch. Those rumors, they weren't true. What rumors? You heard the same rumors that I did. Binary Driver. That's a move that Jay made famous with his brother Mark. You mean the rumors about your wife being passed around the locker room? I'm not married. A single man. And what is the issue with these Murdochs? What, are, what kind of issue do they have with Jay Briscoe? Maybe they were tired of hearing about the rumors too. And Kenny Murdoch, oh, a cutthroat oh. suplex. A cutthroat suplex. We don't Jay Briscoe. These wrestlers have just wrestled two falls. What a piece. And the rumors were false. And these fans not amused at the antics of the Midnight Outlaws. Makes me sick. And Jay Briscoe is out cold. Good. Jay Briscoe is out cold. Maybe we won't see him for another five months. What are the issues that the Midnight Outlaws have with Jay Briscoe and Ruckus? Were they after Jay Briscoe or were they after Ruckus? Eric, they're probably after Jay Briscoe and Ruckus. No one likes Ruckus and Jay Briscoe. So you, you, you heard the same rumors I did about those Midnight Outlaws, Jay Briscoe, but two people can't be in the same place at once. Looks like we have a partnership oh, here. Man, they make me sick. Yeah, they make the fans sick. Looks like we have a partnership. And I'd love to see Ruckus and Jay Briscoe take on those Midnight Outlaws.
And look at this, John House, Jay Briscoe and Ruckus, after being ambushed by the Midnight Outlaws, have returned to finish their third fall. And they're back, Gardulo, but how much do they have left? Jay that bandage is totally torn off the left shoulder of Jay Briscoe. How much pain is he in? Jay Briscoe, of course, was dropped on his head by that cutthroat suplex. Ruckus, of course, winded. Winded. Tired. Probably tired. Overweight. No. Ruckus did not receive as much of that beating from the Midnight Outlaws as young Jay did. But yes, both men are tired. Yes, both men might feel a little bit winded. Both men might start feeling a little bit sore. You have that adrenaline going during the match. And Ruckus right now goes for the thrill seeker. Neck breaker. Jay Briscoe now climbs out of the ring. They gotta end this one early. They gotta end this one quick. Cannibal Senton. Jay Briscoe not showing the ring rust that I thought he would show here tonight on Fake U TV. Eric Gorgula, how much do these two have left? They just both took a beating from each other. There was a long break in between falls. Those of you that don't know at home, he has him up for the Jay Driller, no. Ruckus hangs on, Jay Briscoe hangs on. Jay Bis Briscoe trying to end this one early with a Jay Driller, but didn't get the job done. Roll up by Ruckus. Two count by Rob Hartzog. And a kick out. Drop kick takes Jay Briscoe off his feet. Those of you that are watching us at home, we had a brief intermission between the second and this fall that we are watching right now. So both wrestlers had time to regroup. They were both offered the opportunity to sit out due to the beating of the Midnight Outlaws. But as consummate professionals, they insisted that they come back out to finish the third fall. Ruckus now with the badass. And Eric, why does he call that the badass? Because it's badass. Why do you call yourself the hitman? I don't call myself nothing. Well, that's appropriate, actually. That's what the women call me. Nothing? They call me the hitman because I hit it all. Ruckus now with the snap suplex, holds on, goes to a small package. Jay Briscoe with the kick out. You were thinking after the brief intermission that Rob Hartog wouldn't be windy. Well, during that brief intermission, he had the opportunity to scarf down about 15 hot dogs. Ruckus start press. We gotta slow that down so people can see Ruckus's belly shift oh, during right. that Ruckus start press. You know, you're not exactly a picture of physical health yourself these days. Ruck Ruckus asking for a chair from the fans. There's two or three of them in there, it looks like two. Ruckus now setting up two chairs. Places Jay Briscoe on them. I'm sure Jay Briscoe would like to take a seat, but not in this kind of fashion. Jay Briscoe reverses it. Screws him up, fall away, slam! All of those chairs! And Ruckus paid the price for bringing those steel chairs into the ring, Eric. We've talked about it before, digging your own grave. Jay Briscoe opens another door, maybe the final door, maybe puts together the final piece of this puzzle in defeating Ruckus. Be like, careful what you bring into that ring, because it can and will be used against you, just like that steel chair is being used against Ruckus right now during this match. This is like seeing three different matches here all at once tonight on Fake U TV. Ruckus crotches Jay Briscoe up top. That spinning kick to the back. Oh, we've seen him do this before. Ruckus now has him up. The fans love this. Jay Briscoe to trio pro. Poetic Ruckus, Poetic Ruckus, Poetic Ruckus. And Ruckus takes the win. Ruckus is the better man tonight. Of course, Jay Briscoe endured a cutthroat suplex from the Midnight Outlaws and the five months off that ring rust was just too much for Jay Briscoe to overcome tonight against Ruckus. You just said it yourself, Eric. Ruckus, the fatter man tonight. You said it. I didn't say that. I'm putting words in my mouth.
Marcus now at Jay Briscoe. Go in an athletic contest. What an athletic contest. Maybe we'll see a fourth fall, John. No shame in losing to Ruckus, Jay. No shame in losing. At April 13th, when we return here to Viking Hall, we may possibly see Ruckus and Jay Briscoe form an alliance to seek revenge against the Midnight Outlaws. as you watch this Watchy, this Iron Man champion, Adam Flash. Oh, I appreciate our champion, Eric. Come to think of it, I appreciate all our champions here at CZW. Proud champion. And, and, of course, and of course, now that Lobo is the true owner, as seen fit by the State Athletic Commission of the Rock and Rebel of CZW, you would have to think that Adam Flash would have some kind of an advantage here in combat zone wrestling and in this matchup tonight. You know, Adam Flash, a very versatile wrestler. I've followed this man's career. I've been a personal friend of his for a long time. He can get in there with the junior heavyweights. That's how he made a name for himself out on the East Coast here about six or seven years ago, tearing it up in the junior heavyweight tournaments. Then he bumped up a little bit, got in there with those heavyweights, had some plastics, and now, has decided to enter this Iron Man division and has been quite successful. And what happened, Eric? As soon as he decided he wanted to be an Iron Man, he became the Iron Man champion. Absolutely won that belt at the Cage of Death back in December, the Cage of Death 3, as he went about 15, 20 feet in the air off of the ladder in a breathtaking moment, putting Nick Burke, that current champion, the champion at that time, through a table, winning the match. It was an absolute classic. Of course, last month, the Messiah and Nick Mondo battled it out, thumbtacks included, and Adam Flash came down to ensure that Messiah would win the match. Big right hands there by the Messiah, knocking Adam Flash right off his feet. The Messiah now takes Adam Flash over the top rope, out to the ring. This one's gonna get ugly real quick. This is a battle right now between two athletes, two warriors, two gladiators. The Messiah with a baseball slide out, and a flash of the right, and another. And a big reverse leg fetch chop. And a flash is gonna take Messiah to school tonight. You're not gonna walk in. Ooh. You got a victory over this 10 and a half, 11 year veteran quickly 
in Viking Hall if you're Messiah. It's just not gonna happen. The Messiah just whipped out a flash land on that steel post, Eric. The Messiah now reversed. What are those steel guardrails that have no give? They are very unforgiving, those steel guardrails. Those guardrails are 75 pounds a piece. Absolutely, that flash just went right into it. Using one of our security guards. But you'll find out actually when you, you're going to be one of the guys carrying those guardrails in. I don't think so. Adam Flash and the Messiah trading chops, trading punches, giving it everything they have with a pace like this. This match is not going to last too long. Now Adam Flash into those guardrails. And Eric, what is going to happen April the 13th for live CCW action in South Philadelphia? Anything can happen. Anything at all. On January the 12th, the Messiah walked through the front door unscheduled. The Holy Roller by Messiah walked through the front door unscheduled and answered the challenge of Justice Payne and had an absolute classic but came up short. Returned last month and defeated Sick Nick Mondo and yet another classic. Can he do it again against Adam Flash? Well, he defeated Sick Nick Mondo to earn, the, to earn the shot. At the Iron Man title, but beating the champion is a whole hell of a lot harder than beating a number one challenger, Eric. If you're Adam Flash, you don't have to beat Messiah. You just have to survive. But if you're the Messiah, you have to pin Adam Flash to win that Iron Man championship belt. Messiah springboard a leg drop, hooks the leg. You know, out west when Messiah was holding their version of the hardcore championship, he had to get sick and tired of those fans coming up to him and saying, well, you're not truly hardcore because there's a promotion out east that's not just hardcore, they're ultra-violent, and their champions over there are Iron Man. And Messiah had to be sick and tired of hearing that every time from the fans, from fellow athletes, from critics. And tonight he is here to prove them all wrong and that he too can be an Iron Man and step up to the test here and reach the next level. Yeah, he was telling me that when he was the hardcore champion on the West Coast, the fans were handing him dildos what? And, and butt plugs. Excuse and me. Ball games. Excuse me. Big oh. close by there by Adam Flagg. How do you know anything about that stuff? It's a family show, for God's sake. All I do is go to the Eric Gardulo website. Thank you very much. Out of 20 bucks. Adam Flash, tell the fans to be quiet because they're about to hear a chop. Adam Flash's partner, Doomsday Danny Rose, not in the building tonight, conspicuous by his absence. Oh! Neck breaker by Adam Flash. What do you think the move of the month's gonna be tonight? Adam Flash, I have no idea, Eric. I think Adam Flash makes him up as he comes along, but Adam Flash cannot get too cocky and too relaxed with the Messiah. Well, he can lose that Iron Man title. Again, as much of a goofball as Adam Flash is, you have to be doing something right to last in this business close to 11 years. And Adam Flash looked like he was going to go for the move of the month. The Messiah now comes up top. I wonder if the Messiah brought any of those thumbtacks with him here tonight, John. Eric, I don't know about you, but I don't like thumbtacks. Well... And a big right by the Iron Man champion of Combat Zone Wrestling. And here comes the move of the month. The T-Bag. The T-Bag. The move of the month. And Adam Flash just dedicated that to our fans in the front row. Adam Flash has not hooked the leg, Eric. You would think after 10 and a half years, he would have hooked that leg. Absolutely. One would have to wonder if Sick Nick Mondo is going to try and reclaim his stake at the Iron Man Championship anytime soon. What Sick Nick Mondo ought to start doing right now is start sucking a lot of wind to our new ball, Sheriff Lobo, and maybe he'll get another shot at the Iron Man title. And a flash putting that table. And remember, falls count anywhere. They can pin each other over at the stake place down the street. They can use anything they want. It's an Iron Man match. Now with Lobo as the owner of this company and Adam Flash as Iron Man champion, I wonder if a rematch with Justice Payne is in the works. How'd you like to see that match again? Well, loyalty sure does have its rewards, Eric. When you're loyal to the boss, he greases your palms. Grease is something. 
Out of flash now. Ball up top. No, you gotta be careful what you say. He might start breathing your cheeks. Excuse me. Out of flash now. Oh, my Death Valley driver. Oh. The Messiah may have punctured his elbow. Eric, that's our Iron Man champion. Maybe not for long. The Messiah holding his elbow. An obvious pain. But that's our part of winning the Iron Man Championship. You have to have an incredible threshold of pain to be an Iron Man champion. The Messiah now without a flash. Right into the turnbuckle. The adrenaline that the Messiah has going right now may be enough to finish things off. No. He was ready to rob Hartog. Maybe that's the move of the month. The Messiah is out of flesh up for the fall from Grace. Oh! Fall from Grace. Fall from Grace. Can he close the deal? Can he close the deal here? That's about five, six, seven. Can we get a referee around here? I can count. I don't think Hartog's getting up anytime soon. I think he's taking a nap. Will someone please get in there and burp him? The Messiah now is going to take the opportunity to set something else out. Set something else up, excuse me, outside of the ring. But in the meantime, that's giving Adam Flash a lot of time to recoup, Eric. The Messiah has taken combat zone wrestling by storm. And you are right. All of this time that Adam Flash has been in there, he's been thinking, he's been regrouping. How much gas is left in the tank, however, of Adam Flash? That's the question. The Messiah now with a chair, a steel chair. Ow! And a miss! That's gonna kill the hand of the Messiah, that vibration. Big right hands there by Adam Flash. And the Messiah now on that table. Adam Flash may have connected straight to the temple with one of those punches. That could knock a man out instantly. Messiah rolls off the table. There's a couple shots at Adam Flash. With those tables outside of the ring, it's like a minefield. It's like walking through an Afghanistan minefield. Anything could happen at any time. Big chair shot to the top of the head. Adam Flash has to be seeing stars right now. And the Messiah crucifying Adam Flash, signaling for something. He was pointing at that table. And a flash in a very bad predicament here. Messiah was going for that crucifix bomb. Flash now able to hang on with what literally has left. And a flash again that 11 years in the business has to count for something in this matchup. Hartog still down. What a disgrace. Look at Adam Flash, not too impressed by the Messiah. Messiah nails Adam Flash with a chair. This is what an Iron Man match is all about. This is exactly what it is all about. If you win this, you are absolutely an Iron Man. By the time they finish this match, they can be dehydrated. Bones could be broken. Ribs could be broken. The Messiah now picking up out of flash slowly. Scooping a slam. Picks him up again. Out of flash's body right now being thrown around like Callista Flockhart in a strong wind. Big super kick Messiah over the top. Out of flash rolls out underneath. What a contest this is. Neither wrestler holding anything back. Using everything they have in their arsenal of moves and confidence and knowledge of this sport to get an advantage. The Messiah has no idea that Adam Flash has retreated to the locker room. And he's retreated right to the table. table. Excuse me, a ladder. This is a battering ram. Oh, 
He's got that ladder. Oh! In a very bad predicament, he can decapitate the head of the challenger with a move like that. I've never seen a ladder used that way, Eric. And he's gonna do it again. He's gonna break the neck of the Messiah. That's just sick. It's just downright sick. And the Messiah looks to be unconscious from the pain. Eric, you gotta do whatever you gotta do to hang on to that Iron Man title, even if it's break the neck. His neck may be of your opponent. What's he bringing the ladder in there for? There's no belt hanging up above the ring. That's for sure. You gotta be out of your mind if you're out of flash. You gotta be out of your mind if you're out of flash. We haven't seen this since December. He said that's not high enough. The Messiah fell off the table. The Messiah could barely move. His neck is so, is so busted. It's gotta be busted up right now, his neck. The Messiah can barely even hold his head up. Holding on to his nose and throat. The Messiah doesn't look good, Eric. Maybe he wishes he never got into this match. And that, looks like, flag. that looks like a 15 feet ladder. 15 foot ladder, excuse me. Same kind of ladder that Adam Flash used at the cage of death three. In that breathtaking moment, a moment that shocked everybody in attendance. The ladder was not meant to be used as part of a wrestling match. That ladder is gonna be an unwilling participant in a murder in a few minutes should Adam Flash accomplish what he intends to. And the Messiah in agonizing pain, Eric. His nose may be broke. Nails out of flash on top of that table again. And Adam Flash goes right to those gonads. Smart Messiah. move there by the champ. The champion right now in control. Springs him off the ropes. Goes right into that guardrail. Landed chin first. The Messiah enduring a lot of pain right now. An inhumane amount of pain. Most humans at that point would probably have passed out, tapped out, or given up. He's got to be out of his mind. He's got to be out of his mind. It's not worth it. If Messiah, if Messiah moves, Adam Flash's 11 years can be all for nothing. If he doesn't, Messiah can be a thing of the past. Oh! Excuse me. The last call, the last call for the Messiah. The last call wins it all. And still, CZW Iron Man champion, Adam, what did he say? Flash, thank you. But at what price? Was it all worth it? How many years have been taken off that career of the Iron Man champion for that one move. And the Messiah comes up short once again in his second attempt at the gold. No Tuesday, Danny Rose. No Sheriff Lobo. Adam Flash did it all by himself, Eric. Let's show some respect for Iron Man champion Adam Flash. Absolutely. The signing of Adam Flash and the Messiah for this company was like finding two diamonds in the rough. Messiah now 0-2 in Iron Man title matches, or excuse me, title matches, singles title matches. Championship belts. 
their third at Trent Acid and Johnny Cashmere. Is the third one the charm? Eric, they have more than three or four title shots, and you know it. This has got to be what? 100, 200 title shots? This is their fourth, their third. How many times do the champions have to beat VD for that just to go away? Of course, last month, Eddie Valentine went on a last minute tour of Japan, just fresh back from the Orient. The Ballard brothers stepped in, who are supposedly the best from the West, who didn't last too long with the best from the East, and all over the world, the backseat boys. And look at Dahmer, he is ready. Eddie Valentine is focused. And here they come, the Backseat Boys champions since August the 19th. Johnny Cashmere, the most decorated tag team wrestler in the history of CTW, a four-time tag team champion with multiple partners. The Backseat Boys, arguably the greatest tag team ever in combat zone wrestling. I'm supposed to say that, Eric. I'm called the facts. But well, let's talk facts. They are a bunch of scumbags. What? Attacking their opponents from behind. Cradle breaking a girl ass. What? Trent Aston is a scumbag. Look at him. How'd you like to bring him home to date your daughter? Eric Gargulo, you have no idea what you're even talking about. Johnny Cashmere is an insecure, paranoid schizophrenic. And Eddie Valentine and John Dahmer are not impressed with the dancing and arrogance oh, yeah. of Trent Aston or Johnny Cashmere. Eric, they are our champions, okay? Proud champions, and you said it yourself, perhaps the greatest tag team champions CCW has ever known, and maybe soon you will start showing them some respect. Trent Acid and Johnny Cashmere showed last month that they are no fluke, that the time apart tagging and competition here at CZW did not affect them as a team in the ring. Look at him, he's even kissing fat girls now. Trent Acid and Johnny Cashmere have successfully defeated Eddie Valentine and John Dimers on two previous occasions before this. They are cocky, they are cool, and they are confident, and they are the champs. And let me ask you this about your wonderful champions. How much longer are they going to avoid, are they going to avoid the hate club? If it wasn't for them interfering in the VD hate club Midnight Outlaws match, they would be wrestling Nick Gage and Ada Hatred right now. I got news for you. If you talk to the backseat boys, they will tell you that it is the hate club ducking the backseat boys, not the backseats ducking the hate club. We'll see about that. What do you got to say about that, Gorgio? We'll, we'll see about that in upcoming weeks here on Fake You TV. You know, you That's come it. out here and you talk all this crap on our tag team champions, but you are the very first one in line asking for autographs, take my picture with me, and all that stuff. Are you, do are you done? Are you finished? Trent Asin and Johnny Cashmere. Johnny Cashmere now having batting practice in the ring. I don't think he made it past T-ball. Oh yeah, it's out of there. You're a real funny guy. Oh, look at him, what a comedian in there. I think Johnny Cashmere should hit John Dahmer right in the face with that baseball bat. And of course, Johnny Cashmere and Brian Logan have had issues. I wonder if that will come into play here. And don't forget, it was Johnny Cashmere and Trent Asin that broke the hand of Eddie Valentine. And what's Lobo doing out here? Aha, yes! The new owner of our company with HC Logan. Funny you say that. Smooth. Funny you say that. How Brian Logan has problems with Johnny Cashmere and vice versa. Da, 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 da. Maybe the press is going to do something about it. Remember the backseat boys were the first ones out here congratulating Lobo last month when they thought that he beat Zandy.
Pete C. Luke. He's about as corrupt as a politician. Yeah, but Eric, he is an official. Official. Official what? It's CZW. Official what? An official official. Brian Logan's not leaving. They're getting into a shoving match. Logan thinks he's refereeing this match. And look from behind. I guess he's not refereeing this match. Yeah, good. Now it's even, Eric. Now we can have a fair tag team title match. Randy Valentine and John Dahmer, VD, are like the Buffalo Bills of professional wrestling. They continue to get back to the championship game, but can never win the game itself, can never win the championship. Let the door hit you in the ass. John Dahmer right now, very incensed at the actions of the Maxi boys, who look to be using this as all part of a psychological ploy. <laughs> all over the challenger, starting out fast. Johnny Cashmere with those big right hands, shaking it off. As I was beginning to mention before, Trent Asset so rudely interrupted me. BD, like the Buffalo Bills, not again! And they dance it again! Look at him shaking that ass! Big clothesline by BD, and it just woke them up. They are nailing each other with forearms, psyching themselves up for this matchup. What are you doing, John? Eric, I don't know about you, but I was feeling good about this matchup until now. BD all over the back seats. They continue to get back to these championship matches, but have yet to fulfill their dreams and become champions. John Dahmer is a former tag champion. He was the first ever season of the tag team champion, but did not hold it for long. And look at Cashmere. To John Dahmer going low on Johnny Cashmere. What's his problem? What's their problem? They're going to use everything that they possibly can to their advantage to beat these backseat boys. Who knows how long it's going to be before they get their fifth title shot. They even get a fifth title shot. Dahmer now with Cashmere up, ramming him into that turnbuckle. Hopefully never, Eric. Hopefully they'll never get another title shot. They don't deserve one. That palm strike is illegal. That's a loaded hand. There's a loaded cast on Eddie Valentine, and you know it. Dahmer now with the explode off the top rope. Dahmer feeling that it's going to be a hard-hitting matchup. So, so, Eric, what do you think about Lobo taking over CZW? I have no comment what on that. What do you mean you have no comment? Uh, boss! What's up, boss? Hello there. How are you guys doing up here tonight? We're doing fine. We were doing a lot better before you came up here. Uh, <laughs> Eric, I never get tired of your wit. Never. I'm sure. I'm sure I, I never get tired of your sarcasm. I know how much you love to have me up here. I thought you got to add a little bit of class and dignity up here. Well, why don't you get rid of House then? He's, he's the only reason. He's the only reason I'm up here. That's right, Gargiulo. Get it straight. Well, what I want to know is what is the agenda of changing officials between Brian Logan and H.C. Logan? What was the purpose of that? I just wanted to give him a little work in tonight. I thought Brian Logan had enough. It looked like he could use a break tonight. I don't know. Brian Logan is a crooked official. He puts his hand on Johnny Cashmere every chance he gets, Eric. And somebody had to do something about it. And it took our boss, Sheriff Lobo, to do it. And a big super kick takes Eddie Valentine right off of the apron here. The backseat boys, nobody double teams their opponents better than the backseat boys. And look at this clothesline taking a page right out of BD. You know, Dewey and the Hate Club have been in your pocket, Lobo, for quite some time. When are they going to get a shot? Eric, that is the work of Tag Team Perfectionists. They're our champions, Eric. I'd like to know when you're going to make the match between the Hate Club and the Backseat Boys. Oh, well, I don't know. I haven't even thought that far ahead yet. If it were to happen, it, it happens. I don't know. What are you asking me for, Eric? <laughs> I have a better question for you, boss. Eric wants to know when he's going to get his CZW credit card like mine. Don't worry, Eric's gonna get his soon enough. I'm sure. You're gonna get yours, Eric? I heard him. He's right there. You'll get what's coming to him, don't worry. You gonna get what's coming to you, God Jewel. Oh, I got friends in high places. I'm protected. Yeah, loyalty has its reward. 
Johnny Cash with a big right hand. The only thing these backseat boys look better than the gold are looking at themselves in the mirror. Cashmere putting the boot right into the face of John Dahmer. On, Lobo, what everybody wants to know is what you are going to do here with them. What do you know about running a business? What do you know about running a company? You're going to lose our investors. Any investors are. Believe me, those investors were headed out the door until they found out that I was taking over. We got people left and right wanting to put money in this company now. So, and things are well in hand, Eric. Yeah, Eric, those investors were running out the door until Sheriff Lobo came him. along. Trying to ask to Johnny Cashmere have had a distinct advantage throughout this matchup here. Lobo, a question on everybody's mind. I'll ask it. Will Zandig ever be allowed to return to CZW, even just for one match, maybe once a year? Well, you know, we could... Looks like the floor needs mopping down there. You know, we could collect tickets. You know, we, got a lot of jo we got a lot of openings for John Zandig. Yeah, he can mop the floors. He can scrub toilets. You know, for a man that gets upset when his sexuality is questioned by the audience here at Viking Hall, he seemed to be a little bit on the other side, if you know what I'm saying. What kind of a pinning attempt was that? Sends into the ropes is John Dahmer. It's spinning around here. They think this is Dance Party USA in there. Great double team maneuvers there. Legal double team maneuvers by the backseat oh, yeah. boys. And look at Trent Acid and Johnny Cashmere, not too concerned at this point by Eddie Valentine and John Dahmer. And I don't think the backseat boys are too happy with this official either, Eric. But now, anything's better than Brian Logan. Now we saw last month when Lobo apparently won your matchup with Zandy. The backseat boys were one of the first people out there to congratulate you. Is there a relationship now between you and the backseat boys? Backseat, I'm, I'm the boss. They're my workers. That's as far as it goes. I, I don't know what you're talking about, Eric. He don't know what you're talking about, Eric. He's the boss. He's such an employee-friendly guy. Yeah, my boys. He takes care of his boys. They're calling for the T gimmick. John Dahmer up. No. Dahmer lands on his feet. Double Saito. Bam! And he dropped the boat right on their head. The backseat boys are in a lot of trouble right now. What they trying to do? Break their necks? John Dahmer may have just created another opportunity for BD. And Eddie Valentine needs to get in there. And boss, when are we going to investigate the palm strike? That is illegal. It's underway. It's underway. The investigation has already begun. I don't know what that is. I don't know what he's wearing on his right hand there. I think it's a loaded glove. I think it's loaded too. I know it's loaded. Total World Backbreaker. Eddie Valentine just returned from Big Japan studying that strong style. Boom! Double palm strike. That move should be outlawed. Eddie Valentine now following Trent Acid outside of the ring. John Dimer with Johnny Cashmere. It's a striker's matchup. The palm strike. Oh. And of course the Yakuza kick. Big chop there by John Dimer. And who's who Cashmere punching? Look at that moron. Look at H.C. Loken there. Trying to make himself out like an honest official. He's about as honest as Jesse Jackson's tax return. You know what I'm saying. He's wearing the ten strikes. You better put some respect in that. I respect him, but he does something that deserves respect. He's doing an outstanding job in this match. Yeah, Eric, he's an official CZW official. He hasn't been able to keep any order whatsoever in this matchup. John Dahmer now following Johnny Cashmere. Oh, here we go. Where they going, Eric? Valentine and Acid are out of our view. Where they going, Eric? Oh, they're right below us here. Cashmere now kicking Johnny Cashmere off from fighting for his life. Trying to survive, survive this war. They're, they're up here next to us. They're about three feet away from us. Johnny Cashmere calling for the bulldog. You're going to be out of your mind. Yeah, hit him with the bulldog. I knew he was a mean go. Oh! Put Casper right through the table. Oh, Eric, this is not good. That table is so unforgiving for Johnny Cashmere. And if John Dahmer can pick Johnny Cashmere up, 
He can bring, it looks like John Dahmer took the brunt of the blow. Someone's got to do something, Eric. Johnny Cashmere seems to have put the brunt of the blow onto John Dahmer. Trent Acid and Eddie Valentine right behind us. Trent Acid now crawling on his hands and knees. On his hands and knees. Anybody on the I told you! A flaming passion! A flaming I told you! I told you that was out of a flaming palm strike! A flaming palm strike! You have to pull everything out of the back of your pocket to beat the world tag team. I champion. told you that was loaded! I told you that was loaded! They may have burnt the hand of Eddie, Eddie Valentine. Trent has it in a lot of trouble. But Eddie Valentine unable to follow up with a cover. Look at Loke in there asking him questions. He just hit him with a flaming pop string. Do something right. I don't think that's legal. I told cares? you it was loaded, Eric. But who cares? I told you it was loaded. It looks like the third match with the back seats could be the charm. Eddie Valentine making his way down. I can't believe this. Looks like a scene at a Blackhawk down below us. He, he might be seriously hurt, Eric. Bodies everywhere. No one believes me. Wrestlers hardly believe I tried it. to tell you. Eddie Valentine now all over Johnny Cashmere. John Dahmer and Trent Acid. I hope Eddie Valentine's proud of himself. I'm sure he is. But it's all for nothing if he leaves the building tonight without the CZW World Tag Team Championship belts. Lobo, the, the fans are acknowledging your presence. They're saying hello. I told you that was loaded. Boss, I told you that was loaded. I know, I know. I can't believe what I've witnessed here. I can't believe it. It's all John Zandig's fault. That's why he's gone, Gold Duo. Johnny Cashmere now follows him in. Any bounce out of the miss. Johnny Cashmere, a tag team specialist. Oh! They're not special enough. That was Zandig's fault. He's not even here anymore. Johnny Cashmere now with that bad arm. Looks like he may have separated his shoulder with that one. Eddie Valentine drops Johnny Cashmere face first in the center of the ring. I wonder if the opportunity presents itself if H.C. Loke will actually make the three count. Eric, Eric, do, do, do. this is not good, Eric. He was just palm strike. That, it was on fire. It was on fire. Dahmer's leg is lacerated. As you can see, and Max Mack, Max Mack taking liberties. Max Mack taking opportunities. Max Mack may be the ace of the pocket of BD for this matchup. Cashmere now goes for the monkey flip. Wait a minute. But the power of John Dahmer. Dahmer's got him. Bam! Boot to the face. Cashmere with the high. Oh! The high five, the HIV. The HIV! The high five. And no, not enough. Not enough. Damn it. Damn it, Ashley. Can that referee count any faster? John Dahmer and Eddie Valentine, war courses, just like the common man watching our program, the kind of wrestlers you can get behind. Impartial my ass, I want to see Valentine and Dahmer kick the crap out of the backseat boys. I don't like them. Yeah, we have proud tag team champions. We can all be proud of them. And look at that double clothesline. A chair in the middle of the ring. H.C. Logan not doing much to get rid of it. Oh! And Trent Acid, they just have, they just have had his ribs broken. Oh, and you like it, Gordino. I love it. I love every minute of it. Don't get in there and be able to act like a moron with those stupid gyrations that he does. You make me sick. And Dahmer now, maybe signaling for that doomsday device. A doomsday device was the last move they attempted on the Backseat Boys in their last matchup. But the Backseat Boys reversed the move. Out of putting Eddie Valentine through a table, victory rolling John Dahmer for the three count. You know, Eric, you should be more like John House. Your job is to call the match, not to take sides up here. I am reporting facts. I like what I'm hearing up here. I am reporting facts. 
And the facts of the matter are that Valentine and Dahmer looked at the backseat boys in a very precarious position. Yeah, you want to be more like John House, Eric. Yeah. In a precarious position is your job, bro. Your job, guard Jula. I'm union. I'm not worried. And Casper now catches the bat. No, Valentine has the bat. Valentine has the bat. Hey, wait a minute. We are new champions! We are new champions! No! 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 Yes! 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 Eddie Valentine and John Dahmer's and John Dahmer, a champion you can be proud of. Work horses. They stole like those belts. They yes. stole those yes. belts. Finally, a champion. Two champions that we can be proud of around here in combat zone wrestling. Now listen to these fans. What do you think about that, Lobo? So much for your power. You got new champions. Looks like a quick count to me. A very quick count to me. He's your referee! He's a CZW referee. He's a CZW referee! I don't have any bias. I don't have any bias! I heard him. This is not good, Eric. H.C. Luke shaking hands with Valentine and Dahmer. We got new champions. Champions you can respect. Champions that your little kids can look up to. And wait a minute. He's taking liberties with H.C. Luke. It's the victory party. It's a oh. party. Welcome to the after party. Finally, royal models are out here at CZW that the young kids can look up to. Oh, please. Dahmer and Valentine, brand new tag team champions. Dahmer is second reign with the gold. Valentine is first. It took a long time, but well worth it. Champions we can all be proud of, John. No way, Eric. They stole those titles. And you know what? I bet you they are proud of the way they won those tag team titles. I'm sure they are. I wonder who the VDs are going to defend the titles against next. Yeah, I wonder who they're going to defend their titles against next. Who do you think, Eric? Who do you think is the shot? I'd love to see them wrestle Nick Gage and Aiden Hatred. I would love to see that matchup. Really? Yes. Uh, that, that, thought never, that, that thought never crossed my mind. Yeah, I'm sure it didn't. It never crossed my mind either. You should run for politics. You're so corrupt. Yeah. <laughs> you should run for politics, Paul. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at things. I'm looking at things. We're looking at things, Eric. We're looking at things. Eddie Valentine and John Dahmer taking pictures for the press. The press from all over the world covering this event tonight. I can't wait to get to the after party. Did you get your invitation, John? There ain't no party, Eric. Did you get your invitation, Lou? Come over to the after party. They don't have no friends. How are they going to have a party? God forbid they have food. There won't be none when anyone gets there because Big Fat Smack would have one. All right, one. enough. That's pretty good, right? Thanks, boss. It all started August the 19th. And Boss, am I the only one that calls you boss? No, everybody will be calling me boss very shortly. Yeah, everyone will be calling him boss very shortly, God. Oh, my Lord. dead body. We can arrange that. It started August the 19th and ends March the 9th. And you love saying that, don't I you? I love it. The third time the charm, Freddie Valentine and John Dahmer. Can we have open auditions for for play-by-play -play announcers? I'm accepting applications as we speak. We're accepting applications as we speak. Oh, we, we. 
check my fax machine when I get to the back. You don't even own a fax machine. He's going to check his fax machine. I got all the facts. All the facts and all the facts. You got that? I heard. like Yoshihiro Tajiri, the Messiah, and countless, countless others walk in here and open challenge the champion, Justice Payne, and he has survived all challengers. He has beaten all of them, Eric. Not just survived, but he has beaten all the challengers. Right, Paul? Who, who put Jerry Lynn tonight? Who do you think put Jerry Lynn tonight? Who do you think did that, Eric? I think the boss did it, Eric. I think Zandig brought him here. That's what I think. I'm going to put my money on that, Eric. I don't think John Zandig's smart enough to book someone like Jerry Lynn, Eric. Jerry Lynn with a reverse Corey Guerrero special there. Justice Payne shoots him in, Jerry Lynn. This is gonna be an absolute classic here. Justice Payne shooting Jerry Lynn in. Jerry Lynn with the total roll head scissors. Jerry Lynn, the Minneapolis native, has been wrestling in this business since 1988. This match has all the makings of a classic. Think you could identify Minneapolis on the map, Eric? I'm not gonna comment. I'm not gonna comment on your frivolous statements you're gonna make during a classic match. Like, who do you think you are, the owner of this company? <laughs> Eric, he's the boss. You better start showing him some respect, Eric. Both athletes in tremendous physical condition, but as the match goes on, how will Jerry Lynn's knee hold up? Has Jerry Lynn hit the wall? 14 years in the wrestling business, sure. You're gonna experience some injuries out there, but has he hit the wall? Has he become brittle? Has he become one of these wrestlers that's gonna start falling apart 14 years in the business, or was that injury just a fluke? We just 
just got rid of the guy that was falling apart. I don't know. I think this guy can hack it. I think you were falling, falling apart the last time I saw you out there. Yeah, Eric, we just got rid of a guy that was falling apart, Eric. Wait a minute. What's Steve Rives doing out here? Steve Rives taking liberties with Jerry Lynn. Jerry Lynn gave Steve Rives a cradle pile driver earlier tonight. He's just paying him back, Eric. And Brian Logan is sending him to the locker room. He does not have a manager's license to justice pain. Reputation means nothing. Reputation means nothing at all. The reputation of Jerry Lynn means nothing to Justice Payne. Countless others have walked in here with bigger reputation to Jerry Lynn. And Justice Payne has faced all of those challenges. And beat them. But is Jerry Lynn the first guy to walk in here and finally shut up Justice Payne? He got right in his face earlier. Told him he couldn't stand him. Told him he was a bitch for his crying. Crying every week out here. A pain in the behind to us, the fans at CZW. He will talk his talk, Eric. Let's see if Jerry Lynn can back it up. I, I shot up Justice Payne in the cage of death. Yeah, you did. Now, what did you think of Justice Payne coming out of here last month and congratulating you in the ring? I remember the last time you hit Nick Mondo with a crutch. Justice Payne was the first one to come out here and berate you. Uh, I, I don't, your memory's a lot better than mine. I don't know what he's talking about, boss. Hi, did this Eric? He has this, this memory. He just uh, he he sees what he wants to see. This guy, fabric. That's exactly what it is. Fabrication. But right now, Justice Payne is in total control of Jerry Lynn, Eric. Jerry Lynn's not a guy that's going to make those little mistakes. But how will that ring rust fare for Jerry Lynn? Jerry Lynn with a sunset flip has won many championships over his career with that move. Not enough. Jerry Lynn, boot to the midsection. A new tenant has arrived in this building since the last time Jerry Lynn has been here. An overhead belly to belly throw. A new class has enrolled and Jerry Lynn wants to be a part of it. What does that say for the reputation of Combat Zone Wrestling where Jerry Lynn chooses his first match back to be here in Viking Hall? I hate to see what the reputation of this company is going to be three months from now with new ownership. Boss, wait till you see what I'm going to do with this company, Eric. Wait till you see. Yeah, Eric, you wait till you see what he does with this company. The only reason Jerry Lynn and me, all these other guys, the only reason anybody knows about CZW is because I made CZW. That's it. It's two cages, three cages of death, pyramid of hell, you name it. Me. All me, Eric. Nobody takes away your accomplishments, but I still do not understand the change of attitude and direction. How can you walk in here, look at where we are right now, a sold-out Viking Hall, and you have come in here and take the, you, you took the dreams of a man away. You took a company, a man's livelihood. He may have to go on unemployment. He may have to go on welfare because of you. I've got some very good information. That welfare cheese tastes pretty good, Eric. Right? Don't cry too hard for John Zander. And Justice Payne slaps on the STF on Jerry Lynn, Eric. Justice Payne is a man that thrives on being tested. And the confidence that he has, some call it cockiness, some call it confidence. Tonight it is put to the test by Jerry Lynn, the new effing show, but is Justice Payne truly the new effing show? Smart move there by the champ. He takes Jerry Lynn right down and applies pressure on the knee, Eric. Jerry Lynn is the kind of wrestler that walks into a company and automatically the roster, the company, CZW, the fans, the television show, everything. The stock goes up around here. And look at Justice Payne just going to work right on that injured knee. The knee that just came back from patella surgery. Staying right on that knee. That's exactly what the champ has to do. Jerry Punish Jerry Lynn. Jerry Lynn in tremendous condition. Jerry Lynn, of course, made his reputation in wrestling matches against who some of you out there know as X-Pac, Sean Waltman, the Lightning Kid, and the old global wrestling organization. I wonder if we're gonna wind up like them and go bankrupt. You heard me. Hello, blown air by Jerry Lynn. I'm surprised, I, I think that makes you proud, God, Julo. Absolutely, Jerry Lynn could fight fire with fire. Jerry Lynn could be just as dirty as Justice Payne. It's the experience factor. Jerry Lynn slips up on those ropes there. It's that ring rust. Tornado DDT on the World Heavyweight Champion. 
Justice Payne has made quite a few enemies as of late. Remember, it was last month when he beat the hell out of Nick Gage, knocking him unconscious. Nick Gage isn't even here tonight. Of course, we all saw what happened earlier. He is reunited with the backseat boys. They took out Nate Hatred. What kind of order is going on here at CZW, boss? Hmm. Uh, I don't know, Eric. The show's not over yet. Still plenty could happen. Who knows? Yeah, who knows, Eric? Anything can happen here, okay? Justice. You say Justice Payne attacked Nick Gage in the last show? Yes. Hmm. What if there's going to be retribution for that? And how, and how angry is Need Hatred going to be when he comes back again? He's going to rip this place apart. He's a madman. He's definitely not a person you want to have on your bad side. Neither is Nick Gage. Neither is Lobo. Neither is the boss, Eric. Neither is the boss. It's kind of an interesting situation there, boss. You have Justice Payne, who seems to be packing your lunch these days, and you also have an association with the do Nick Cage and Nate Hatred. Interesting to see how things play out over the next couple of weeks, boss. The only reason he packs my lunch is because he cuts the crust off my bread. All right. I'm sure he does cut the crust off your bread. Does he, does he spread the mayonnaise across the cheeks as well? PB and J, Eric. PB and J. But don't worry, Eric. We saved the tossing of the salad for you. <laughs> Double clothesline there, both wrestlers off of their feet. And not only is this a test for Justice Payne, but this is a test for Jerry Lynn. Justice Payne represents the new generation of stars, the new generation that say guys like Jerry Lynn, they don't have it anymore. They should step aside. Does Jerry Lynn have it? Does he have what it takes? Can he hang in there with this new generation? I mean, Eric, Jerry Lynn came in here and called called our champion a bitch in his own house. He sure did. Those are very, very strong words. Jerry Lynn. Here though. Jerry Lynn backs down against nobody. I bet he would back down from Lobo. Jerry Lynn is a former world heavyweight champion. Jerry Lynn has held belts in every single major promotion in the world you can think of except one, Combat Zone Wrestling. Never held the belts that I've held there. And not tonight either if the champ can help it. A plancha over the top. Jerry Lynn on that unforgiving floor, the impact. Two. Both wrestlers in tremendous physical conditioning. This one can go 60 minutes. Whatever it takes. We got nothing but time, Eric. There will be a winner here tonight. Oh, there will be a winner, Gargi. Are you guaranteeing that? That's a guarantee. See, this boss puts guarantees, okay? Not like that other guy. Yeah. Other guy that helped build this company and bring us here. Helped build nothing. This company was built on my blood, sweat, and tears. I carried this company. Everybody knows. I was on the cover of the Daily News, Eric. The Daily News? He was on the cover of the Daily News, Eric. The man Dog Pearson put you on the cover Bam! of the Daily News. Blockbuster there by Justice Payne on the Jerry Lynn. And there goes Jerry Lynn looking up at the lights. You know, we've all seen Jerry Lynn get extreme in the past, but can he get ultra-violent? That is the question here tonight. Justice Payne has not only hung in there with Jerry Lynn, but he has had the advantage for the majority of this matchup. And remember this, Eric. The champ doesn't have to beat Jerry Lynn. Jerry Lynn has to beat the champ. And the champ better be watching all sides of this arena tonight because even though Nick Gage is not in this building, he could enter at any time. Who knows where Nate Hatred is? He's made a lot of enemies in his career. This world heavyweight champion of ours. Jerry Lynn with almost a decapitating leg drop. I can't see that happening. Would, they, would Nick Gage and Nate Hatred do something like that? I've never seen you do that. Jerry Lynn now slow to get to his feet, climbing the ropes. Jerry Lynn, a chameleon like Justice Payne, he can brawl. Taking a lot fly. of time to get to that top rope, Eric. Jerry Lynn crouched down. Eric, pick me a winner right now. Pick me a winner this match. Yeah, Eric. I'd say at this point, it's got to be Justice Payne. He's had the distinct advantage throughout the majority of the matchup. And Jerry, unlike some people at this table, I am objective. Uh, and that not enough. You Just, 10 bucks on that, Eric? I don't have 10 bucks after the check that I got in my pocket from you earlier tonight. Check this for more than, more than.
more than enough money. I got no complaints about my check, boss. Wait a minute, here comes Steve Rhymes again. He was thrown out of here earlier. Again, this champion of ours can't do anything by himself. Jerry Lynn sending to Brian Logan. Justice Payne, pain thriller, pain thriller. The referee's out, Eric. Here comes Nick Gage. Oh, oh, oh no! This is not good. That animal. This is not good. That animal has just been released from his cage. He's got a sight set on some raw meat right here. You love seeing this, don't you, Lobo? There it is. Bam! And it just broke our champ in half. I think I just heard our champion be broken in half. Nick Gage, what an alliance. Is he aligned with Jerry Lynn? Who would have thought that Nick Gage would be independent tonight? I had no idea, boss. Justice Payne now going on instinct. Jerry Lynn boot to the midsection. Has him set up. Cradle pile driver. Cradle pile driver. Is that it? The Royal Show is back now. Wait a minute, do we have a new world champion? I didn't hear anything about belts mentioned earlier tonight. Steve Rhymes all over Jerry Lynn. And Nick Gage face to face with a man that hit him with about three, four, five, six unforgiven chair shots and he was handcuffed, slugging it out. Big roaring elbow. And here come the backseat boys. The backseat boys all over Nick Gage. It sounds like a setup. It sounds like a setup to me. Is this what our company has come to? Oh no! Here comes the monster! And the monster needs it. Bam! Has returned. And Johnny. Johnny Cashmere finds himself between both members of the hate. Hey, Buster! A hardcore drop. The hate club at World CZW once again. Look at these animals. The lights are out. Get your hand off my leg, Hal. Ow! Stop licking me! You call yourself an owner, you can't even pay the electric bill. Nick Mondo! Nick Mondo and Light Tubes! Nick Mondo and Light Tubes! And he is face to face with Justice Payne! A match that we've all wanted to see for a long, long time! A battle! Two of the most popular wrestlers ever to grace the circles of CZW! Is this as big an announcement? Coward. What a coward. I've wanted to see this match for a long, long time. Why don't you get in there and do something about it, champ? Look at him just kicking the belt towards Justice Payne. Justice Payne and Nick Mondo. Justice Payne just got finished a grueling battle, a loss, the first loss to Justice Payne since February when he lost the belt to Nick Burke back in Dover, Delaware. First Nick Burke, now Jerry Lynn. How many of you motto owners are ready to see me take out Justice Payne? Justice Payne. Well, for those who have been listening for the last six months, I fear no evil. Oh, my God. 
This is not good, Eric! This is not good! <laughs> 